This week's episode is sponsored by Change. Change is the number one mentoring program that teaches you e-commerce from scratch. Change has a real community with real results. I have been working with Ryan for many years now and have attended many of his events and retreats across the world and got to meet members and the amazing community of like-minded people. Ryan works with a lot of big names in the business world, helping them build online businesses and e-commerce. Change offers personal one-on-one support, no experience needed, but like anything, this takes time and is not a get-rich-quick scheme. If you put the work in, you will get the results. E-commerce and online shopping is getting bigger and bigger. This is a great opportunity for anyone that is looking for financial freedom. For more information, go follow Ryan on Instagram at RyanJB and he will guide you through the steps to help you get started and build a successful online business. You can now follow me on all my social media platforms to find out who my latest guest will be. And don't forget to click the subscribe button and the notifications bell so you are notified for when my next podcast goes live. And then we're on. Hello. Guest. We've got Lady Victoria Harvey. How are you? I'm good, thank you. Good First and foremost, you. thanks for coming on. Sorry I was late today. The train was delayed. Um, but very good to have you on. Yeah, very no fascinating problem. as well. A lot of people, you know some of the most powerful men on this planet. You've rubbed shoulders with them. A lot of the men I've spoke out against, if I'm honest as well, you're going to defend some of these men, which is a yeah. great thing also, and which I respect. Of course, and it's, I'm not going to defend every man, but, you know... I have met a lot of these people that have been in a lot of media scrutiny recently. And a lot of people, they just run, you know, they hear the name, like, as an example, you know, Galen Max or something, they just run for the hills. Um, Because a lot of people, they don't have the information that I was lucky to get. And so that is why I've been able to defend certain people very you know, with a loud voice and not have any repercussions. I've never had a legal letter from anyone. Uh, example, Virginia Guffrey, like any of that. I've called them con artist liars on live television. I've had nothing. Um, every network by now realizes that, okay, she's got to be telling the truth. But it is interesting because a lot of these people who you are defending, every one of their friends and family have run for the hills. So I can respect mm. that. And it takes yeah. a bottle to put yourself out there because the majority of people, they do follow a trend. And like we spoke earlier, not everybody has the information of yeah. what's going on. Social media can play a part in that. Listen, I play a part in that myself. Sometimes it's my business to then go with the information that I've had. But you've got to be careful because sometimes that information isn't always 100%. No, accurate. of course. I mean, depending, like for me, I can... I can defend Prince Andrew and say absolutely this guy is innocent because I am I am I the, the witnesses that I have which we'll be hearing more about in the next couple of months um one of them is actually under a gag order by a judge but once that stuff comes out um I think a lot of people are going to have to be well they're going to be very quiet and feel very embarrassed actually um with with other people in the media right now, example, the Diddy situation, no, I don't know. I wasn't in the room. I just can say from me observing, having traveled with him on planes and, and being on boats and being at parties with his mother and his kids, um, yes, it, it, is someone trialed because they're bisexual? I, I don't think that that's against the law, is it? Um there was an FBI raid. They found a housekeeper and two of his kids in the house. Like, it's not a child trafficking organization. Like, yes, he likes to party. He parties a lot. Yes, he might do drugs. Um, he had an alcohol brand. He was he was promoting his alcohol brand nonstop, actually. You know, if you saw his Instagram before, like, daily, Ciroc, De Leon, Tequila. Does that make him a bad guy? Like, I don't know if he beat anybody up. 
Before we get into all this stuff, yeah. though, I always like to go back to the start with my guests, mm. get more of an understanding about you, where yeah. you grew up, how it all began. Yeah. Um, so I grew up in, well, I was born in London. We moved to South of France when I was a couple years old. And I was at a school, French school, uh, till I was about eight. And then I was sent off to boarding school. So I was, I was pretty young. You know, I started flying. I was like one of those little unaccompanied minors with a thing around my neck, British Airways. And, um, I only came home really half term ex yet. So I would go to my grandmother. She lived in Kent as well. Um, but it was a night, you know, I, I enjoyed it. Like some people were like, wow, that's really young to board. And it is really young, but you know, we were allowed pets at school. We had bunny rabbits and hamsters and ponies and it wasn't so bad. What was boarding school? See, when you go to boarding school, you know, at so my, well, it, 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 I boarded very young. Were you lonely? Is that, is, is, no, is, you, are you so used to that life? No, you, you make, you make very good friends, like being in that sort of environment and dormitory with, you know, it was all girls school. Um, I think you, you make those bonds like really strong. Like a lot of my, I have actually quite a few friends still from prep school and my secondary school that I am in touch with. And if I don't see them for a year or two, or even like I went down to Benedon, um, my school for, uh, it was like a hundred year anniversary. And there was um, one of my old best friends. I hadn't seen her in maybe 15 years. And it was like I saw her yesterday. You know, that's the amazing thing about like old friendships. And you've been through so much together. You know, we would build our camps in the woods and climb trees and do all these fun things. But um, I was sent there young because French was really my first language. And my parents wanted me to get into a good boarding school in England and not be at a day school in Monaco, so. But you felt a bit of trauma when you were younger as well. You lost your dad at an early age at nine, is that correct? Um, actually, I was eight, eight and so a half. very young. Yeah, I was, I was really young. I just started boarding school as well, which was terrible timing. Um, I just started the school term. I would have started September and he died in March. And um, so, yeah, that was really tough. I remember being brought into the headmistress's uh office and sort of her private sitting room um the prep school was owned by scottish family actually and um you know getting that phone call having my mother on the line to tell me and uh yeah it was it was it was really hard actually because at that time i didn't really have friends that had lost parents like obviously later on in life you know um but not really at that age there weren't many like me were you close to your dad? I was. I was really close. I was actually born on his birthday. Um, hence, my name is Victoria. His name was Victor. So I was a birthday present. So. <laughs> <laughs> I bet you rem reminded him of that. I think, yeah, yeah. Well, I was like the first girl, um, first girl in my family for over 100 years. And my father had had two previous marriages before me, both boys both very naughty, very difficult. And uh, so I think it was like quite a relief when I was born. <laughs> you must have been spoiled right and then being yeah, the, the I was. What do you mean the only girl in a hundred years? What like yeah, and the family just, just all brothers, boys. old uncles, old cousins, yeah. boys, or just the boys. That's crazy. Mm. How were you treated then? <laughs> you must have seen a lot of trouble then with all the family members and family gatherings if it was just all male. Um, well, we didn't really have big family gatherings. I mean, I suppose we did when I was like really small and, um, but, uh, our family was quite disjointed. Just like every family then. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> They're not alone there. Right, right. So see, when you, uh, oh, I think you lost, sorry to talk about the dart stuff, but yeah. did you lose two brothers also at the start in the uh, first five I years? I did, I did. So I lost, I had two half brothers, uh, John Bristol from the first marriage, um, and Nicholas, second marriage. So, yeah, the, John actually died about a year after Nicholas. So the middle, that he, the younger one died before the elder one. Were you close to them? Not really. You know, I was a lot younger. So like my father, three marriages, you know, throughout his life. Uh, he died when he was 69 um, 
from uh, cancer complications. And uh, I'm just right, losing track of what I'm saying now. Um, yeah, I, we weren't very close. We weren't very close. It was, you know, when my father died, there was litigation against the will for a long time. So it was, um, you know, the family was pretty much at war. Why does that always happen when people die? I know. And, you know, they, they inherited so much already when my father was alive, but people get greedy. Yeah, it happens all the time. Mm. And no matter if it's from a hundred pound to a hundred million people, they're always hating on each other. Yeah. They're just for me, money's a root of all evil. It is. And people really don't is. realise that because mm. I always say it, but there's no really any value to money. All the value we give it is up here. Mm. And it's, it's true. And we kill for it, we die for it. And it's just listen, I still love money, even though I know it's fucked up. I still enjoy finer things in life. I still do great things mm. with it. But it is a kind of energy currency and people kind of, the money is, the, the world is run by greed. It's mm -hmm. run by power, it's run by money and money does bring power to a certain degree. But when you actually break it all down, it's, we're all got but a level playing field. know what to do with it, yeah. you know, and some people don't respect it. Do you see that? Obviously later on in life, you, the more, because everybody changes. Mm. You can meet someone who's starting off and go, he's amazing. As soon as they start making a few quid, right. they change. Something mm. changes in them. It gives people a sense of power yeah. and a sense of purpose that they're better than others. Yeah. But it's not the case. Everybody no, bleeds the same. I mean, I just, I what I love is like meeting people that you just never even know that they had money and they're just so low key about it. Um, I always like that. But you'll see your Zuckerbergs and your, they do walk about with a pair of flip flops on and shorts. And, exactly. And then you've got me. Well, that, well then in Hollywood, you know, Hollywood, you have, it's kind of the other way around, right? You, you sort of get the sort of the hippie actors that have just got holes in their jumpers and stuff. And, you know, that's a bit extreme. It's mm. like, go get some clothes. Like, you have millions of dollars, like, yeah. dress properly. <laughs> but one of the best actors, I think, is Keanu Reeves. Seems to have yeah, a clean heart, I've seems to be a good him. guy. Riding a subway, waits in queue, uh -huh. um, doesn't really... He's really amazing with yeah. his staff, apparently, like what I've heard. This one girl that used to work for him, he bought her a shop on Sunset Boulevard. Um, yeah, he's he's very generous, I've heard mm -hmm. that. I mean, Robin Williams, I think Robin Williams used to get mm -hmm. the homeless men to play um, as extras, give them money, give them food, give wow. them heat, unbelievable. Yeah. And uh, you tend to see that it's the ones who are, get the kindest hearts that struggle mm -hmm. the most in life. Mm-hmm. So through school, did you rebel then once you lost your father and went through a bit of trauma? Um, the shackles kind of off? Or were you... Did I rebel? Not really. I mean, I wasn't like, I wouldn't say I was like a really naughty schoolgirl. I mean, could you? Though, yeah, we, sm sort of we smuggled family? sweets into school. <laughs> but could you rebel when you sort of boarding schools with the strict? Um, yeah, pretty strict. Like, so, you know, when I was eight or nine at my prep school, I don't think I really rebelled. Like, luckily... I'm a, I'm a real animal lover, so I had that as sort of my therapy, I suppose, and just always had loads of pets and was, like, breeding my pets at, like, 10 years old. I bred my rabbit. She had baby bunnies. And, you know, I think, yeah, a lot of horse riding. I spent a lot of time in the stables. And then secondary school, I don't think I was super rebellious. I mean, I did get in trouble because I had a loud voice, apparently, so when lights off, um, you know, it would be like me having to stare at a wall for like two hours as a punishment or, you know, you're made to write lines, you know, 200 of the same thing. I will not do this. Mm -hmm. <laughs> but I, I wouldn't say like I wasn't like dyeing my hair purple and getting piercings and tattoos. Like, you know, my mother was like, if you, she wouldn't even let me have my ears pierced until I was like 17 or something. Um, so, yeah, I wasn't like, that bad. Yeah, crazy. <laughs> Waited till later on in life, did you? <laughs> still don't have a tattoo, actually. I still don't have a tattoo, and I managed to um, avoid that living in Los Angeles for um, 18 years, so I think I did pretty well. Um, yeah, look, I had my fair share of partying. I think it's sort of like what everybody goes through at some point, and I was lucky that I got that most of it out of my system pretty young. Yeah. Do you think being in boarding schools makes you want to try out everything that you've kind of been oblivious from? Because the is it was it so strict that you kind of pushes mm. you away, or does it keep you not disciplined? Really. Um, not really. You know, 
I remember what I'm trying to think the first time I ever went to Ibiza. I went um, with one of my good friends from school. I, I get this like request from Glamour magazine and it's like, oh, wow, I'm like 18. They want to pay me to go to Ibiza, all paid for and be paid and could take a friend. I was like, wow, this is awesome. So I I went uh, with one of my, my best friend from school. We had the best time ever. I think that's probably when we tried ecstasy for the first time. Um, <laughs> we were like, we were like brushing our teeth in the bathroom after coming back from this club and it was like daylight. And we were like, wow, even brushing our teeth feels amazing. Um, but, you know, looking back on it, it, yeah, school was strict, but it's not, that didn't make me sort of be rebellious later. What'd you do after school? So I had a gap year. Um, I actually was going to be going to uni um, for four years, studying French and history of art um, with a language that is four years. And I was going to go to St. Andrews, Exeter, or Bristol. I got into all the unis I wanted to go to, basically. I was sort of like one of those um, children that sort of fluked their way through exams, revised always last minute. And I would yeah we would sit in the kitchen listening to aerosmith um on caffeine pills <laughs> and so we'd stay up all night before an exam and i'd somehow get through it and like do really well i got like two and two a's and ba level and but you know there's a thing in england about deferred entry it's quite a popular thing but the problem is i ended up just having way too much fun in my gap year to then go to uni did you get a taste for that other side of life well, you know, what it was is like, for me, I'd been at boarding school since the age of eight years old. And a lot of these people that I get it, like, if you don't have that experience, university is is like a, it's a new thing. You get to like, you know, live with friends and all of that. And I kind of felt like I'd already done that. Um, for like the people that had been at day school, like it would have been, you know, a new, a new kind of experience uni. But when I left school, I had this gap year. I traveled around Malaysia and Thailand for about six months. There was a Malaysian girl at my school who was a good friend of mine's far. And yeah, we had a we had a adventure that was really my first time to Asia, although I'd been to China once, actually on a school trip when I was 16, um, which we did get good trips at school. I kind of, I, I studied the subjects where we would have good trips. So like, History of art was one of them. We'd get good trips on that. Well, obviously, I liked it, but we got to go to Barcelona, um, Florence, you know, all these amazing places. And so after Asia, then I did a, a Queen's secretarial course because my mother was like, right, you know, you need to get some qualifications so you can start working. So I did that. So I learned shorthand. I learned like I was I was actually really good at that as well. What shorthand? I can't believe it. Um, shorthand. It looks like a bunch of squiggles. Like reporters do. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I learned how to do that. So is that getting its own like? Obviously, we've got our alphabet, but is that getting its own kind of formula? Or yeah, yeah. Because obviously, journalists write down. You think, what the fuck have they just written? Is all oh, there's kind of the same? Have they got all their own different yeah, techniques? Yeah, no. I mean, there it's it's like a certain language. So I did that, and then I lived in Florence for a couple of months. Um, actually, I was out five months or something, um, studying history of art in Florence. And I finished the gap year. I met someone who was older than me, um, who won't. owned. So I would have been, what, 18, 19 at this point. He was 35. And uh, we moved in. Actually, I had a flat first just off Sloan Square, um, with two of my friends that I'd been in my gap year with. Then I met this guy after that. And, um, you know, suddenly the idea of being a student again, I started modeling as well. I started earning money and the rest is history. And now here we are. <laughs> we have, like I say, which we'll touch on, you have rubbed shoulders with some of the most powerful men on the planet, some mm. even to this day. It's mad. When did you... Because where, where does the lady, Victoria Harvey, where's that name? Something to do with Bristol. What, what's the connection? Something to do with about? Bristol, yeah. Yeah, what is that? I think so, yeah, apparently. Um. So, yeah, so my father was the Marquis of Bristol. Yeah, what which, is that? What is that? Yeah, I'm Get Scottish, the, so I don't... 
get the encyclopedia. Yeah, listen, I, I tried. I looked it Everybody up when I was coming. This. I looked, I looked look at it, it come. <laughs> oh, I know it's very long and complicated, but you know, so the 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 daughter of a marquis or an earl is a lady, and um, you know, it's something like at school. I never told anybody. I was like, I just wanted to be like the same as everybody else. And my grandmother wrote me this letter. This is to my prep school. And she put lady on it. And I was like, oh, my goodness, this is so embarrassing. So then they started asking me about it. And, you know, I basically got outed that I was Lady Victoria. But I don't think anyone really understood it, you know. Like there would be one board with, because there was quite a lot of kids at my school that um, lived abroad. So it would all have our flight details and it would be like my name with niece. But people would think it was nice you know, Nice Airport. Um, so, yeah, it was something that I was like, oh, I really kind of wanted to hide as a child. And then as I got older, I kind of realized actually, like, this has sort of got a little advantage as well. You know, I need to sort of milk it. <laughs> <laughs> Nothing's changed now. So you kind of, through that life, you had your older boyfriend. Did you start, were you starting to get attracted to that kind of, Party lifestyle and yeah, I mean, men in power. I think so. Look, you know, I was, um, yeah, I was 19. I started dating Moans Tolstrop. He, at the time, he owned, you know, the really happening hot spots in London as far as restaurants. Um, he started Daphne's in the collection, and um, he actually then opened like another two or three restaurants. Um, after that, he had a Moroccan one and then a Vietnamese. So, yeah, it was, I was sort of thrust into this sort of lifestyle, I suppose. And I was kind of the baby, you know, I was hanging out with a lot of people older than me. And um, it's just, yeah, I just started going out a lot. A um, few years after that, you know, I started uh, writing a column for the Sunday Times. It was called Victoria's Secrets. And then it was like, even more pressure to go out because then I was actually having to fill pages of what I'm not actually doing. So then it became a bit more of a chore and it would get to that point where I'd be like, oh, I don't really want to go out. Like now, you know, my life is very balanced. And the last time I was living in England, I was in my 20s. You know, I'm now 40s. It's very different. We're not like going to nightclubs anymore, falling out of cars or you know, when I look back, I'm like, wow, it was kind of quite a rock star kind of life. Was he your first love? Um, was he my first love? Yeah, probably. Or was it lust? <laughs> no, it was actually quite a long relationship. We were together for about three and a half years. Um, and then he decided to run off with this girl, Lena, who was the singer in that crazy band, Aqua, that sang that Barbie girl song. Fuck off the girl. Yes, black, yes. <laughs> so <laughs> I'm a Barbie girl yeah, yeah, yeah. in a Barbie world. Yeah. Every time I hear that song, I just want to like punch a wall. You must have anyway. heard it recently though because of the new movie. It was <laughs> I out. know, I know. So this girl became like upset. Like it, it kind of like the last year of our relationship, we would break up, get back together. It was sort of like quite tempestuous by the end. I mean, it was about three and a half years and so kind of, I suppose, during a sort of a mini break and us getting back together, we were still living together. I then get this uh, message from this girl, Lena, right? So we were all kind of hanging out back then because my, my boyfriend at the time, he was Scandinavian. I somehow, I was friends with um, some other band members. I set up my friend Consuelo with one of the other guys in Aqua. Anyway, before I knew it, I've got Lena messaging me going, oh, don't come to Saint Tropez this weekend because I'm going to be staying in the house. And I was like, what? So I call my friend Consuelo. I'm like, right, we're going to Saint Tropez. This is going to be like, so yeah, I did head on. I ended up like crashing my moped in the sand outside Club 55. It was just, it was a mess. So yeah. <laughs> How does that knock your confidence when someone cheats? Um, it's pretty bad. Yeah, it's pretty bad. Um, that was, you know, and I was, I was very young as well at the time. And, um, that really hit me hard. Like that is still the longest relationship I've ever been able to have from back then. Um, that's still like the record. 
<laughs> and I'm laughing. I didn't trust yeah, men after that. But you know, love is painful. Yeah, it's the. I, and I always say this: like, death and that you kind of got over. You can handle that. Love mm. stays with you forever. Mm. The, the breakup, the pain of a breakup, is the worst pain ever because it's mm. internal pain. It's so deep where you don't really know how to get over it. Mm. The drink, the drugs, or sleeping with other men or women or whatever it is to try and deflect. But even speaking mm. about it now, it will still bring back with that bastard. Like there's mm. something. And it fucks you up for the rest of your life because yeah. like you say, it's in and out relationships, not knowing how to trust. It really does right. some damage. And so he had a little daughter at the time, you know, so I was really young. I was like 19. He's got this sort of five-year-old daughter, very sweet. And, um, you know, I bumped into her a couple of years ago. We were still in contact. And she said to me in front of her mother in this restaurant, she goes, I wish that you'd been my mother. And married my, my and married my father. I was like, oh, that's so sweet, but I can't believe you just said that in front of your mother. Mm -hmm. um, so yeah, it's uh, you know, I just yeah, it was just I look at life and it's just all timing, isn't it? And you know, we have to go through these things to learn what we don't want. Yeah, but we, the thing is, we don't really learn. Mm. <laughs> we don't really I try learn. and and, and I, not I date those types. Yeah, I try, but it's painful. Because whatever insecurities and low, we've all got low self-esteem, those things trigger you for the rest of your life. Everybody who I know who's been fucked over or fucked someone over, it's, mm. there's always karma. There's always something that does to your mindset mm. as well. When it scars the mindset, you can never really heal it. Yeah, I had some really crazy relationship um, uh, things that happened to me. And then so after that... I had this very sweet boyfriend um, called Seb and I um, cheated on him for this racing car driver who then who then ended up marrying, no wait, Seb ended up marrying his fiance. It's really twisted stuff. Yeah. No, 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 no. So the guy Seb I was mm -hmm. dating, who um, he, so he, I was dating him this other guy, David, racing car driver, she, did that rings any bells? Yeah, cool Not going to say, but could have the same accent as you. Anyway, <laughs> so he was engaged to this girl called Heidi at the time. Anyway, like this whole thing blew up. Like some photographer got like a photo of us like outside a club. I guess we weren't like super subtle. And um, anyway, the result was Seb and Heidi getting married. Like within about six months, like it was like total like rebound, right? I'm going to get both of them, you know? And it wasn't, it was just a fling when, you know, like you don't marry these racing car drivers. It's like, especially at the top of their career, like they're not really going to be the most faithful type either. I don't know. They always seem the most clean cut them in golfers. No, I always think all. they're quite clean cut, but then again, look at Tiger drivers? Woods. Yeah, they always no. look as if they're proper and they're, they're, everything they see on the media is very, they all, it's very they clean. Cheat. Do they? Yeah, yeah. I met a guy years later and he then says to me, oh, I'm engaged, I'm getting married like next month. Oh, really? Oh, okay. Yeah, so no, it's all like deceiving. But then back then you had all the girls as well standing in front of the cars, all the, the models and stuff. Exactly. It's just like, Especially with sportsmen, you know, I feel like it's hard for them because they don't drink or party, obviously, and they're so dedicated to that sport that they're doing. And then the one time they might have a glass of champagne, like after a race, gets them like really drunk, really quick. And whichever woman is there, no way. they'll take whatever. Because that, who they have on, Katie Price, she <laughs> says she was seeing Ralph Schumacher, but it came out he was gay. Really? Yeah. Wow. He, I think he'd only been had two partners, but the partner message. He was Katie um, Price. he was with um Kylie Minogue's sister, wasn't he? Yeah, I'm sure. Danny. But Danny Minogue. But I think it was maybe Danny Met, but apparently he's came out as gay. Really? Yeah. Wow. You, tend you to know, see maybe that. you sometimes see that like or often even if a guy is like super heartbroken, they literally then turn gay. I've seen that happen. Mm. Yeah, no, that, I, I, don't, I don't think the heartbreak's anything to do that. I think they were always secretly gay. The, the amount of people who I interview. Why are all I, these men bisexual now? Like, I want a guy, that? like a proper guy. Like, 
I left LA. Like one of the reasons I left LA was like, there's no straight guys there. <laughs> Maybe I you're swear. Telling them all gay. No, they're all like they're all just puny, just like wimpy. They're yeah. not men, you know. Yeah. Like where are these warrior men that we're supposed to have? Scotland, babe. Listen, yeah, 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 I know. We're a real Let's go get some we're men kill. Yeah. Yeah. Brave yeah. heart. Yeah. It's yes. a, but I, I, listen, this might sound crazy, but I think Alex Jones says it, and who else says it? They were putting stuff in the water that were turning frogs gay. And yes. they were putting it in the I've actual water that. of actual men turning gay. Mm -hmm. Someone said, listen, this sounds absolutely crazy. No, 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 crazy. it's true. I've yeah. read about but that. But because they, women take the contraception, uh -huh. or whatever it is, in the water, the with the pill, they flush it down. Uh -huh. And with the, not testosterone, which women go up. But it's it's estrogen. estrogen. Yeah. That is it. So estrogen. Women so women in the toilet when they take yeah. the pill, the estrogen's coming through the toilet water. It's mixing it and coming straight back through the sink. So mm. apparently, it's making men turn gay, okay. turning into women, feminine. Well, it's definitely like it's something because this is not normal. Like, how? What is the ratio now of gay men? It's like crazy. This is the gayest. This <laughs> is the gayest generation of all time. Yeah. Well, so, they're so, promoting little rainbow flags in like kindergarten classes. Yeah. And little kids are like, I want the rainbow. I want the rainbow flag and the unicorn. Like, that looks really fun. Mm -hmm. You yeah, know? It's crazy. But again, there's a. There's they've a, just banned uh, puberty blockers in the UK. Yeah, have good. you seen That's that? That's the best thing they've done. But Scotland have just put out a, a, a ban on speaking against trans or speaking against misgendering. I thought these are the warriors yeah, in Scotland. That, that's why we're fucking turning gay we're up there as well. <laughs> oh, no. It's turning weird. The whole place is turning weird. But again, they're doing scientists, scientifically proven now, people who watch porn as well, watching willies, watching balls, it's turning people gay as well. Because in their really? mind, it's shredding still in their mind, the stuff that they're seeing, and it's becoming normalised. So even oh. all these perverts that are watching porn, the majority of them are gay. <laughs> don't drink water, don't watch porn. You'll be sound. <laughs> Oh my god so see when you're rubbing shoulders then is that when you started understanding that lifestyle the celebrity lifestyle hanging about with a-listers were you feeling some sort of yeah i mean i suppose the a-lister thing yeah i was you know like my friends were at uni and i'm hanging out with you know movie stars and rappers and it's just all seemed so fun right mm -hmm. like why would it not be fun um but obviously like it just became that was the way of life, you know, and I couldn't get out of that cycle for a long time. It was sort of the endless partying in Ibiza and Saint Tropez and everywhere else. Um, <laughs> reminiscing now, yeah. I'm just thinking, <laughs> oh my goodness, the adventures, you know, well, 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 Brazil and Cape Town and all of it. But you know, I look back at it and I'm like, yeah, it was fun and. Friends of mine that got married really young, I feel like they definitely resented my lifestyle at the time because, like, they were at home with a baby. And a lot of women, I see this all the time, instead of really having a career or anything, they just get married. That's sort of their job. So they don't ever have to do anything themselves, right? The, the guy just provides for them. They've never even rented their own flat before they just kind of moved right in with someone and you you get the professional wives i mean i know people they've they're on the, like the third marriage you know mm. and they just pop out more kids and get more money from a divorce that was never me that was not what i wanted to do what was your longest relationship the first one um probably the longest one was yeah about three and a half years four years um yeah i think so and then after that, you know, I went from dating someone who was quite a lot older to me to suddenly dating younger guys. <laughs> <laughs> the table's turned, don't they? I know. So, um, you know, after that whole uh, mess, I suppose, of Seb and that whole breakup, and then I dated this male model called Nathan who was really, really good looking. <laughs> And um, actually, no, he, Nathan and I were like pretty much the same age. We were like a year apart. He was on this um, model uh, TV show. It was called Model Behavior. It was like the first reality show back then. And we met at the Lord of the Rings premiere. And he was like kicking my chair. He was sitting right behind me. And I was with my friend OJ, who's um, a good friend of mine. And we usually like the same kind of guys. And he's like, Victoria, look. And I look and... So he kind of connected us after the film and 
we ended up then um, all going to Cape Town for New Year's that year. <laughs> and then I ended up dating him. Um, but after that, I think for me, yeah, I probably, I look at some of the relationships of younger guys and it's, it's sort of, um, I suppose I got hurt by the older ones. So then I, I felt like I couldn't get hurt by younger guys as much because I would have the control. It's a protection. Have you ever been in love? Yeah, I think so. I've definitely like felt it for sure. Because it is a weird feeling. And if mm. it, I always say, if we, if we loved them, then why didn't we stay? Why didn't we work at it? Why mm. didn't we put up with their faults and their, their bullshit? Because well, I always get asked if I've ever been in love, but I think I always... You haven't? I, I What's your longest have. relationship? 18 months. Okay, that's not great, is it? How old are you? 40. Okay. <laughs> That's still young though. Yeah, I'm trying though. Mm. I'm fucking trying. It's difficult mm. though, this day and age. I don't drink or anything, mm. so it kind of limits. Yeah, but but, out but there. there's there's a lot of other people that don't drink, you know, and you just need to find someone that likes the same things that you like. You try to give me love advice. <laughs> 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 Your fucking relationship status uh, is worse than me. <laughs> <laughs> but you just need to, you know, like I just had this friend of mine and I, I was messaging him about this event, Cannes Film Festival around the corner coming up, and he's like, Oh, I don't do that stuff anymore. I don't drink. And I'm like, that is pathetic. Like you can still go to these events and not drink. Like it doesn't mean, it doesn't mean just because you don't drink, it doesn't mean your life is over, you know? So I started uh, Kundalini Yoga about five years ago or so. And that actually really changed my life. As far as like, I spent many New Year's Eve's. I didn't even have a glass of wine because you get you get such a high. I think you should try it, Kundalini. Was that the serpent? Kundalini, yeah. Kundalini Yoga. Um, but you get such a natural high that you don't, you know, wouldn't even think about drinking again. Mm. I'm six years. Still think about it, yeah. because I know who I was when I was on it. Yeah. I didn't give a fuck. I yeah. didn't care. Mm. And that was such a good feeling, but it was a depression. Mm. When everybody mm. went home, I stayed out. Mm. I didn't know where to go. Well, that's the problem is, you see, like, for me, I was lucky. Like, I could, I could party, I could go out. But I always had like that that stop button. I always had like that feeling of like, even when I was in Ibiza, you know, and we were like nonstop at these clubs, like as soon as it was getting light, I was like, I got to go home, take a sleeping pill, go to sleep. Mm -hmm. But some people couldn't do that. You know, I have friends that they can't just have a glass of wine. They'll have a bottle of wine. So that's, that's a difference. And that's how you have to learn how to like, manage yeah. it and how it works for you but everybody i've seen in that life in their 20s that very fast-paced lane that they're in they do struggle now mm. they struggle now with can to be content they struggle now with peace mm. i don't know if it does something to the brain or the dopamine levels i think it does the receptors in the brain it, where you're it, just a constant drugs high. like yeah, kills I was your brain drugs and gambling so right. i was constant chasing a buzz and then it comes all down and you're kind of succeeding but you never feel that sense of mm. bliss or excitement you just think yeah don't really feel anything. Right. You be, not but become you were, dead. But, but you were sort of chasing, you you just have to find different ways to get that natural high Yeah, now. my dog. <laughs> Fuck everybody else. I'm just happy with my dog. Yeah. Stevie boy here. Hello, travel buddy. Is, uh, yeah, but it's to find the balance and I don't have all the answers. I'm mm. working to find the answers to that. Just do well for myself, but to show others. Mm. This, is, this ain't what it's all about either, all the glitz and the glam and mm. try to be popular and that. It's all bullshit. You would have tasted it firsthand. Yeah. A lot of people in that life, because you're searching for something. Mm. We're all thinking that's the great life. Well, that, I got into that life for many years. That's what I always say to people. So like, I've never been that person that has to like have that handbag. I'm not going to be putting these things on my Instagram, right? You have these girls, that all they do, they post like bags or like, then you Chanel coat or whatever, like that is empty. That is like really empty living. Like if all you do is shop and you've got nothing else to talk about. Um, I've never been one of those people. And I find like when people boast about, oh, I'm going to get this new car or this new thing, well, they get it and they get that high for like an hour or however long because these are like people that are addicted, right? Shopping addicts. And then they crash again. So they got to keep spending and spending because 
they're searching, you know, the real things that make us feel good, you can't buy. Like you, you, you can, these are things that we, it's free for all of us. It's just like, we have to, it's like our, our own self, you know, and we have to feel good. And if we don't feel good inside, buying anything is not going to make a difference. Yeah. But again, we're, we're living in a social media world where we think that is people are living a better life because they've mm. posted a bigger car or flight, yeah. flying a private plane. Mm. Everything's all rented now. Everything's all, it's all smoking. It's mirrors. all it's a all facade. All, yeah. Like you look at these people on Instagram, you know, that's the other thing. So when I was doing all this in my early 20s, we were legit having a great time. Like there was none of this like, oh, hold on, let me just do a selfie with someone or, you know, if I have pictures of celebrities from back in the early 2000s, we did those photos because we actually, we weren't going to be posting them anywhere. Those are for personal use. Do you know what I mean? Like there wasn't any Instagram and stuff back then. So it was like, we took a photo of someone that was going to be in a frame at home or in a photo album. We weren't doing it to like show off to the world. Now, these people, they walk into a party, they get their phone out. They're getting someone who's famous to be in a photo with them that they've obviously like never probably even spoken to before. They're taking a bunch of pictures and then they leave. They're not experiencing anything. Like I feel so bad for this young generation. Is it generation X? Mm -hmm. Um, they're just, it, I just like, they're never going to have what we had. And I I feel really bad for them that they're not going to have these like real experiences. Like everything is sort of so manipulated mm -hmm. and so fake. Yeah. And it must be very hard being a child now. Yeah, because they're like really guinea pigs for the technology now. Our, our spines mm -hmm. are starting to bend. Our, we're getting dents in our fingers. We're holding our phones and... Mm. We're not really living it. And I'm caught up in it as well. I know this and it fucking mm. annoys me because I'm sucked in right. to a world of trying to be something. And then like, like right now, what's so scary, right? Like the rates for cancer is like going up and up and up. And like, what is that? Is a lot of it, is it from our phones? Um, you know, a lot of people are getting brain cancer right now. Um, I don't know. I try and when I'm on the phone, I just have my phone on speaker and I have it and I talk into it. Mm. I never put it up to my ear. Yeah. But it is really worrying. Like, is it what they're putting in our food? Is it what they're putting in our water supply? Um, I know actually EU and the UK, the regulations as far as like um, what can be put as far as pesticides in our food is actually much more regulated than the US. US, they can just literally like feed you garbage and it's, you mm -hmm. know, you can buy it at Whole Foods. Yeah. <laughs> it's, but even apple cider vinegar. Fucking Bill Gates and Katy Perry bought over that. Mm. Apple cider vinegar. Yeah. One of the most organic yeah, things I, ever. I, I, I used to fucking love it. I know. I used to drink a shot in the morning. It's good for the gut. It's so I good. I know. What was the brand that was like the brand? I think it was like Victoria Beckham that sort of really put apple cider vinegar on the map. Mm. I think it was like she said, you know, that was sort of the routine she did to kind of stay skinny and healthy. Mm. So like everyone then did it. It was so good to cleanse the gut, but mm. uh, Bill Gates had just bought over it. Like and anything said, that Bill Gates buys do not buy but like you say we're guinea pigs brain cancers gut um men of fucking cancers and mm. suicide and men turning i mean gay. why do you think there is such a big cancer rate right now it what could do be you the think? radiation from wi-fi it could be the radiation from phones even ipods stuff mm. like that but again it's got to be something to do with the foods the water mm. even breads and, and then the all the kids have got like ADHD yeah, it's all labels. and all yeah, this but then other the stuff. Kids are getting vaccines. I think yeah. the K booster, the K vitamin booster. Okay, so while we exist, while we're talking about the vaccine, so what what were your initial thoughts on the vaccine when it came out? Bullshit. Yeah, it was made in under a year. Guy from Bill Gates was no fucking <laughs> no qualifications whatsoever. I was still climbing mountains. I was still doing my thing. I wasn't giving a fuck. Hmm. People were saying, "Oh, you're killing my gran." Fuck your gran. Yeah, I'm doing my thing. I'm nowhere near anybody. I'm staying in nature. Um, yeah. and I understand the fear factor mm. I understand it no, well no because of course like in the beginning you know we were shown so much propaganda yeah. of these people in China on the streets like collapsing and yeah. you know were they all actors who knows look there were, definitely was a virus like I think the people that did catch this virus early on got pretty sick like my brother had it early on and I actually fell for it, like everybody else. Like I was wearing a, I was wearing a mask for the first <laughs> two months, like an idiot. Oh. I remember, 
I remember going on a hike in LA with a mask on. Can mm -hmm. you believe that? I then turned completely the other way. So that was like March. I remember like almost getting into a, a bit of an arg heated argument with an air hostess on a plane in mid-February and saying to them why they're not wearing a mask. Like I was that freak. So I then totally flipped the other way. So it was in March, April. By May, I went totally anti-vax, anti-mask, anti-everything. I got my um, cable disconnected, my TV, and I refused to watch any more news because I just saw it all as propaganda. And literally from that moment on, like my life completely changed. Mm -hmm. What changed that? Um, I don't know. It was like, I think I was just watching more and more of this propaganda and it was literally like something went off in my head, like this major red light that just made me start questioning everything. Um, living in Los Angeles, we had these really bad riots, these BLM riots. Um, I think that was around May. And at that point, I literally saw through everything. I suddenly realized that, hold on, these riots, Antifa is not Trump. This is the other side. This is Biden that wants this. This has nothing to do with him. And I literally like had some sort of epiphany and just like, okay, right, not watching TV. I was getting all my news on Telegram. I started going to, I went, I traveled around America actually. And I went to a couple of conferences where a lot of professors and doctors that had been deplatformed or had lost their licenses. I went to watch them speak and um, yeah, it changed my life. Like I started meeting a lot of people as well that were on the same wavelength, um, either through my yoga. Cause obviously like if you're spiritual, you're going to question more about what you're going to, what you're putting into your body. Mm. And the more awake you are mentally, the more you're going to be awake to what they're trying to do to you. It's just question everything. Question everything because we're not scientists or doctors. Mm. And when it was just a 99.9% .9 survival rate, I'll take my chances. Yeah. yeah other, right. We're the, fit. We're yeah, healthy. Just look after yourself. I think people, and I can understand the fear factor. People were scared mm. they couldn't travel again or they couldn't go and see their loved ones. I understand it. Yeah. I'm not trying to bring them down or say you've made the wrong decision. Yeah. But I think it's clear now that people did make the wrong decision. Mm. I think it's coming out. Look at the amount of cardiac arrest on. Sportsmen so and fit apparently, people. I, I saw this clip um, for someone Tucker Carlson had uh, interviewed recently, and they said 14 million people worldwide is an estimate of how many have died from the vaccine. It's mm -hmm. pretty high, isn't it? Yeah, that's next level stuff, and you don't know the effects. People are saying it changes mm. your genes, your DNA. Mm. I don't know. I, I don't. I'll see what the future holds, but it's all the same patterns. You're going to have a hundred... bunch of zombies running yeah, around. Yeah, it's possibly. <laughs> got... Listen, you Zombie never... apocalypse. Every hundred years, it's always the same patterns. You've yeah. got wars, yeah. you've got plagues, you've got viruses. Yeah. It's just the never-ending cycle of... What is so crazy is that I understand like people that got it in the beginning because there wasn't as much information out. And if you were watching only mainstream media and listening to mainstream radio, you were not getting like the real facts at all. It was, you had to start really kind of like digging for that information. I think another like real eye opener was when they banned the hashtag natural immunity from Instagram. That actually was banned. Can you believe that? Um, I actually did take screenshots of it because, you know, that people that don't realize that you tell them now, now it's not banned. They're like, really? Was it? I'm like, yeah, it was fully banned for at least like a year and a half. Like I, um, I was on a shadow ban on my Instagram for like pretty much most of COVID because I tried to warn people. I even fell out with my own family. Like my mother thought I needed to see a psychiatrist because I didn't want the vaccine, <laughs> you know, and then you know, it got to the point, and then finally, my mother, she sends me this text message. She's like, I'll never get another one again. You were right. And I was like, yeah, I've been telling you that for like three and a half years. She was in the hairdressers um, last year, and this woman walked in, like hands like totally shaking, um, young, you know, 40 years old. She'd been in the hairdressers three weeks before, totally fine, you know, running in. And she actually told the hairdressers in there that she'd had a booster shot a few weeks ago. And her, even her doctor told her that it's a reaction from the booster shot. So now my mother will not have one again, okay. which I'm like, I thank God every day that she, he, you know, she was in there at that time to actually see that. Because a lot of people, 
they actually have to witness this stuff with their own eyes. Like, they won't believe you. Like, I would try and warn people. And they're like, well, you, Victoria, you're not a doctor. Yeah. My doctor's telling me to get it. And I'm not a doctor. Which is but true, yeah. I'm not. I don't have it. But you know what? Now my family doctor is admitting to my own family that, oh, yes, he's getting people in vaccine injured. You know, this they don't is... speak about that though. No. Like every doctor was getting like 40, 50 quid every vaccine they were giving out. Yeah. People were getting free vaccines. But and you know, this stuff. is this is murder. Like like during that time, there was a bunch of celebrities that got paid to put out false information. Yeah. And when you looked at the videos of them, there's a famous video. I don't know if I still have it, but it was a Mar Mariah Carey one. And you can see that a syringe, there's no needle going into her arm. You know, these people that were promoting Pfizer, they were being paid millions and millions of dollars. Now, if something like that then turns into a lot of people dying, that is murder. Like, mm. those people should be accountable for that. But they won't be because they're too powerful. Yeah. Too powerful. Too much money. I think Pfizer made over 100 billion. And now you've got this guy, Travis Kelsey, you know, this like sort Taylor, of fake relationship Taylor with Taylor Swift. Swift. He was which, giving 10 million. Which, which, which this is a totally like, this is a really good example of a fabricated relationship in Hollywood. They often do this. They put a power couple together that is basically owned by the powers above. And, you know, it's well known George Soros bought all of Taylor Swift's rights to all her music. He is one of the people that basically funds the Clintons and other politicians. Um, so this is a man-made relationship. It's not going to freaking last. But I think it will be until the elections are over. Um, Travis, Ke yeah, exactly. He is the Pfizer, Pfizer boy. Um, so, I mean, I don't mean any harm on anyone, but it just, when these people do have sudden heart attacks, it's like, I don't feel bad for them. Yeah, and it's scary, but this is the way the world operates. Yeah, and there people... was another American footballer that just, um, I read about this morning yeah, that 35. passed away. Yeah. yeah, and it's sad, but like I say, people are uneducated and it's not mm. their fault. It's not, no, and, and, and promoting it on all social media, like you say, we are not educated enough, so people are going to yeah. go for doctors. People, well, more people die with the, pharmaceutical the, drugs than anything the, on the planet. The, the, I know. I mean, I know that the highest um, death, like deaths, especially in America, is uh, medical malpractice. Um, more than cancer, more than anything. Um, and people trust their doctors. If their doctor says it's safe to take, I was lucky. I had a doctor that was like, don't take it. That's but at that doctor. point, I was already like, I'm not getting that thing near me, mm -hmm. you know? But if people are depressed or suicidal, the doctor just fill them up with Valium. They don't tell them, go in nature, cut out the drink, mm -hmm. cut out the cigarettes, cut out well, people... junk food, exercise. They don't, they're don't. just giving them fucking more shit to make them feel yeah. even worse. And it tells you on the box that you can be suicidal. Yeah. You're already suicidal. Yeah. You need fucking proper nutrition. You need to exercise. You need to cut off the drink and the drugs. Mm -hmm. Stop your bullshit. Stop lying to yourself. And if mm -hmm. you're still feeling unwell and unstable then, then seek help. You need another, yeah. an, an, another alternative. But right now, yeah. stay true to you. Everybody knows right from wrong. Everybody knows what they're doing is fucked up. But yet we do it because we're living in a glorified world where we think mm. drinking and taking drugs. And I've done it for years. I can only say yeah. that now that I'm not doing it. But it causes a big part of depression. Alcohol yeah. and drugs, it fucks people up. It's a depressant. Yeah. Well, the problem is, you know, especially in America, they they prescribe them for, you know, all these opioids. Like a lot of sportsmen actually get addicted because they, they get an injury playing and then they get addicted to these pills. Um, I have a very good friend and who passed away a couple of years ago. And, you know, to actually like see someone really going through that, you know, I... I'd never seen um, someone actually smoking crack. And like, I remember going to his house one time and I'd never, I'd never actually seen him when he was on a relapse. Like he always kind of hid it from me. We were friends for like 25 years. And um, I literally had a dream about him, right? So I, I sent him a text message. I'm like, you were in my dream last night. Is everything all right? We're like literally in the dream. We were on a roller coaster ride. I text him. He's like, yeah, everything's great. Da, 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 come and see my new house. I go over there and he's so skinny. And I'm like, my God, you look, I just, I said to him, you look like shit. Like what happened to you? So thin, gaunt, like his legs are like twigs. 
And he's like, oh, you know. And then there's like two girls that were like assistants in bikinis by the pool. And I'm like, how much are you paying these girls? You know, like this is this is like a real situation of like the worst of Hollywood that you can see. Like, you know, people just taking advantage. Um, and then he he disappears for a second, comes back with this sort of giant bong thing and starts like smoking crack in front of me. I was like, wow, this is like, this is bad. I've never seen this and like witness crack or heroin being like, you know, smoked in front of me. It was really sad. We finally got him into rehab um, about a month or two. Then he was sober for a couple months and then he relapsed and then he died. Yeah, it fucking grabs your yeah. soul, man. It yeah. takes you to the brinks of yeah. hell. But you uh, see, that kind of addiction, uh, that starts with pills. And getting uh, pills in America is super easy. I remember when I first moved to LA, I had to, I had a root canal filling. And um, they prescribed me, which one was it? Vicodin. Horrible. You know, I was like, I just moved from here, so I had no idea what Vicodin was. I remember going to then a barbecue that day, and there was an actor there that was like, oh, I'll have them if you don't want them. I was like, and I stupidly gave them to him, and then I found out like he was sort of like, you know, had been in that, addicted to them, so I was like, oh, shit. But for me, it had a really bad reaction. Like, I remember, like, I couldn't sleep all night. I was just laying there, almost having this weird out-of-body experience, and wide awake. It was horrible. So I was like, I would rather have pain and not not take drugs like that. And they prescribe these things way too easy to like so many, you know, anyone that has some kind of sort of pain, they're giving them these pills that are so addictive. But a doctor will visit I mean, for I it. remember going out to clubs in LA and there was this one girl that I would see out a lot, and she would, you know, these these people that get so addicted, like, you know. When I was given it, I was given it actually as a painkiller for my tooth. But this girl, I said to her, because I remember she looked like she was really sweating and stuff. And I was like, are you okay? She'd taken Vicodin and then been drinking alcohol. But she'd done that on purpose. Like, that was like what kind of buzz she was trying to get. I was like, that, she didn't even, like, she looked a mess, you know. It's not, it's not attractive to be, like, slurring and all, like, fucked up. It's yeah. not a good look. But like you say, people are looking for that escape. You don't know what Yeah, the and that's the thing. And that's, like you said, doctors for just prescribing stuff, that doesn't help them. That doesn't heal these people's wounds. It doesn't get to the bottom of the problem. And that's what people need to do and what doctors really need to, you know, these p patients actually, they need to really get to the bottom. I know a lot of people are doing ayahuasca and Prince Harry's been talking about that. And... I've never done ayahuasca, but it seems to be like the last frontier of what people seem to take to when they've tried everything. And, you know, you, you apparently had this like experience. Yeah, I, I, I done Have it. Have you done it? I done it about four years okay, ago. Okay, how was it? It felt like a cult. It felt yeah. like um, another form of an escape. It felt okay. like um, hocus pocus. I oh, feel really? as if everybody who done Did it. Did you throw back. up? No, <laughs> I went there. Yeah, they give you a list because they apparently to do. give you a bucket to yeah, throw up in and stuff. And stuff. I couldn't stop laughing. I was oh. a laughing Scotsman. Um, <laughs> Did you do it in Scotland with no, a shaman? Costa Rica. Oh, okay. I made a documentary about it. I'll send you. Oh, but right. At the time, I bought into it because I'm searching. I'm mm. on that journey. I'm not drinking. I'm not taking gear. Life is good. Mm. I'm doing a podcast. I'm making documentaries. Yeah. Could this be the fucking healing of the world? You buy into it. It's the shortcut to happiness. Takes mm. you away from all your fears and demons. Mm. I thought that sounds a bit of me that I bought into it and then I went there mm. great experience met friends for life majority mm. of people have slipped back mm -hmm. I think it's um, the placebo effect I think you can as humans we all look for guidance right. no matter what it is we'll go to the, we'll gravitate towards guidance because we're all suffering mm. we don't really know what's going on and I've done it listen I'm still in a great place but it just it felt very cult it felt very I feel as if people are buying into the spiritual side of shit because it's sexy and now it's becoming more trendy. Mm -hmm. Everybody's wearing baggy pants and a couple of tattoos and they think they're fucking spiritual teachers. Doesn't work that way. Mm. You've got to really work within. You've got to really mm. open your mind to everything in life. And yeah. for me, it's listen, I'd probably fucking do it again. That's how fucked up my mind is. But mm. I just enjoyed the escape. And because they kept telling me to surrender, 
They all kept right. working on me. I had four or five oh, people saying, surrender. And, yeah, in my bed at night. But for me, surrender's quitting. Surrender's fucking Yeah, yeah. So you have flag. surrender in the back and of your yeah. head. Is like, I will not surrender. Yeah, I thought, Fuck and they're this. telling me to surrender. I'm surrendering. So they says that I was fighting against that. Right. That's where the laughing came in because that was my defense mechanism mm. for so long in my life. Laughter. If you, somebody dies and I go to a funeral, I'm laughing. Were you like in a big group? Like, did did everyone sixty in people the, did and that did everyone else have a completely different experience? Yeah, or? I was trapping balls, man. They so were you all, were fighting it, yeah. basically. That's I'm a fighter, why. so it's, yeah. um, they were all fucking dancing, all dressed in white. I'm in this single <laughs> bed trapping balls. I was seeing <laughs> hell and fire, and they kept like rubbing my did heart. Did you do? Have you done the toad as well? I've done everything. I've done fucking what DMT was the toad like? years ago. Yeah. It's okay, man. But again, it's a form of an escape for me. Yeah. Everything for me, you can get to higher states through meditation and breathing techniques. Mm, exactly. For me, well, cool, that's, yeah. that's, so that's Kundalini. Yeah, so that's for me, breathing it's, technique. For me, it's cold water yeah. therapy, a bit of meditation, and that's it. If I've got problems, so fuck, got on with it, James, because the bottom line is nobody cares, son. You just got to deal with it. I have mm. problems every day, but I just know how to handle them. I don't mm. slip back and drink and hide and pretend and blame everybody else. If I'm having a shit date, it's on me. My mm. life is going great. I don't need to moan, but mm. I still want more. Mm. I'm still greedy for some reason. And yet I know all this. I mm. understand all like, these mm. patterns. I know social media is bad for me. I'm still on it. I know this food bad for me. I'll still eat it. I've still got that fuck it mentality. Yeah. Yeah. Live life. But not all monks as well. Mm. It's got to find a bit of balance. Yeah. As long as I'm not dabbling on drinking drugs, yeah. I'm winning. And everything else. Listen, I'd like I say, I've tried all these things, but a lot of people do this shit and do it every other month. Mm. They're doing it every other fucking year. Like you, you, you're still running, then it's not really working. Mm. If you have to go back and listen yeah. to all these fucking dimensions and spiritual gods and all, it's it's trippy shit. Do you yes. know what I'm saying? Like, but for me, natural things in life. Fucking mm. take your shoes off, walking the grass for ten minutes. You, I know. You'll feel That's a difference. That's so good for us. Yeah, grounding. I think grounding. Yeah. yeah. So good. For and us. it sounds all hippieish and hocus pocus, mm. but everything everything grown from the earth is what we should be consuming. Mm. Mm -hmm. The fresh water, fresh lakes. But again, is anything fresh anymore? So again, I thought about fucking off into well, the I'm wilderness. sure I'm sure the lakes in Scotland yeah. and where you live are, are But then they're saying all the fish is fucking poisoned and salmon's all bad for you now. No matter. Well, no, not all salmon. Obviously, yeah. like depends on the salmon farm, you know, yeah. because it, they it's just like the cattle and every the other every other animal that gets pumped full of things that to yeah. make it bigger and grow faster. Full of water as well, mm. chemicals. So the dark stuff, all the people mm. you kind of come into your life for you probably in that part of lifestyle. How do you say, is it Ghislaine Maxwell or Ghislaine? How do you say her name? Uh, Ghislaine. How, because the relationship was 20 years, how did that come about? Um, so we met, we met... Probably around, well, we met actually through that boyfriend I had when I was 19. So, oh gosh, got to calculate, what, how old am I? Um, but that would have been, uh, that would have been like mid, mid 90s. Who was she then? Like normal person, you know. So I, I had friends that went to uni with her. Um, they went to Oxford with her. And... Uh, so obviously, like her age gap, she's kind of around the same age as my boyfriend at the time. So a lot of his friends, like, yeah, they'd known her since uni. And she was okay sound? Yeah. And when did Prince Andrew come into the picture? Um, I met him totally separately, not through Galen, but obviously like the circle, the social circle in England, well, in London particularly, is very small. Um, I met him probably like uh, around the same time, like late 90s. What was he like? Yeah, seemed like a decent, you know, decent guy. Um, very sort of direct and uh, good sense of humor. Um, yeah, um, we actually, we were on a sort of, not a blind date, but sort of a, like a double date type of thing. Um a family friend, Anushka Hempel, she owned, she started Blake's Hotel, which is, was such a fab hotel. And um, so it was her and her husband and they invited Andrew and I. Well, did they have security when these guys go on dates? I don't know. They're kind of hidden. <laughs> Are they? <laughs> you know, I think they sort yeah. of, you know, hidden so you don't see them. So see when you're in that lifestyle, do you think, <clears throat> because like you say, she's probably started out an innocent girl. Do you think part of them get groomed to then being who they end up becoming? Or do you think they've always got it in them? Like for the sex trafficking and bringing young girls and stuff? Well, you know, as far as sex trafficking, a lot of it's bullshit. Like, 
Um, I mean, I know a lot of viewers will be very upset to hear that there's no like underground tunnels under the the church on the island and was it a temple or but um i don't think it was you know do you call it like what what stage do we call grooming right so when i met her it seemed like she was very in love with jeffrey like they seemed like a genuinely good couple and you know what seemed to have happened is she brought in these girls for massages for Jeffrey. Um, and then those girls wanted to be her. They wanted her lifestyle. I even have it in text messages that Maria Farmer wrote. Um, they wanted her out of the way. And they were just, they were, well, they were super jealous of her being English and posh and having this sort of family history as well, you know. A lot of these girls yearn for that. You know, they're not from, they're all kind of from broken homes, not, um, you know, not good families. They haven't, they haven't really lived a very um, great life at this point before meeting him. And suddenly he opens up this whole new world and they see Galen as a threat and they want her gone. Um, I believe that, yes, he definitely like, had a bit of an addiction to women. I don't think he's, you know, the, I don't think he's completely innocent at all. Um, but I don't think that any of those things that happened with any girls, none of it was forced. Like, the the girls could come and go as they wanted from his house. Yeah, but it's a different story of birds coming to your house and having parties and yeah. if everything's a free-for-all. Nobody's I asked mean, they're having sex parties or whatever it is in your private time, but yeah. it's the underage girls. That's yeah. when it becomes well, a problem. See, yeah, so for underage girls, I actually, I never saw girls that are underage, and I've always said this in every interview, that I never noticed girls that, there was no girls younger than me, and when I met him, I would have been at least like 19, 20, so I didn't see that, but you know, I wasn't there all the time. So, see, I, I can only judge from yeah. what I see on the TV and what mm. I read on the media, and yeah. we can't always trust them, a yeah. million percent, but... When you well, have you see, that's that's the thing, you know, because of the way of the media manipulation during the COVID years, like, I don't believe anything anymore. And it just, that 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 whole thing made me question everything now. And whenever I read a story in the news that is, it's so being put out there by, by mainstream news, a lot of the stuff I found out, you know, is usually the opposite of what the mainstream narrative, like, who is behind that narrative and who is making money because of that? Like, that's what we always have to ask. But what about the young girls who said they were 14 and he was touching them up? Which one was them? 14? I don't know. I watched the documentary. One of the girls says she was only 14 Send it when to she me. was there. Yeah. Send it to me. I know there was one because she was the younger sister. I think she, Annie Farmer is, is um, one of the main ones. But, you know, Maria Farmer is a complete freaking liar. I mean... So, like, my main witness, who is on a gag order right now, I mean, we started putting out text messages and emails that between those two. And she um, she obviously was rather upset by that because the first text message I put out of hers was how she loved Jeffrey. <laughs> I was like, busted, girl. Um, so she started, she's probably made, like, 200 videos of me. Um, which, you know, she dedicates a lot of her time. It's kind of cooled off the last few months, thank goodness, but it got pretty heated at a moment. Um, but George has been put on a gag order because she knew he was on probation. And so she basically said um, she filed two police, um, uh, what are they called? Two police reports on him saying that he's harassing her. No, he's not harassing her. He hadn't communicated with her for months before. Um, so, yeah, I'm hoping that, look, I just want my life back. I just really want the truth to come out about this and the right people to be behind bars. Um, as far as Ghislaine, I don't, I don't think she is as guilty as what the media has made her out to be. How so? Well, I just don't, I mean... So why is she behind bars? Like she she's got she's got more time in jail right now than murderers, like people that have actually like 
killed people. Do you think she could die? I think every day is is a struggle for her in there. Is she opened her mouth yet and gave names? Um, I don't think that she has been giving names of any kind. I think, you know, the fact that she even did that interview last year, that was pretty major. Like, I thought that's never going to happen. She's never going to speak out. And then when she said, oh, yeah, there's at least 50 things wrong with that photo, I was like, oh, my God, thank you, because I'm the only one that has been vocal about this. And Sonny, like, she backed it up right there. So you're talking about the photo with Prince Andrew. The fake, famous fake uh, photo. Maxwell at the Can back. Can we get a close-up of that on the screen right yeah. now? And uh, so you're saying that photo is Dr. Jusin because... Yeah, girl... so I, I really want now the guy that um, did, you know, the detective work on the Kate Middleton photo, I would like him to please look at that photo and see what's wrong with it because there is like... The Kate Middleton one, to me, I couldn't... I didn't see it. The things didn't pop out like this one does. But with this one, when you start looking at it, you, you, there's a mark around the head. So the guy that actually took the pictures, I've actually been in contact with him for a while. I believe he is the guy. I've had um, officers meet him, question him. Like I've been working on this for, what, two years now? Um, so we will be bringing him into the public view as soon as I can have George Tonk speak. So it'll be in the next couple of months. But this guy actually explains, he's actually made videos for me of how he swapped the heads out. But surely professionals would be able to see that it's been swapped in. Because the girl in the Netflix documentary, who, who was the girl that got the 12 million? There's no 12 million. So even just an What was her name? Virginia Guffrey. Virginia Guffrey. So, so just... just Oh my God, I got a bit closer. So just so you know, even the Duchess of York doesn't know what the amount is. So how Piers Morgan and all these other people are touting this number, like she doesn't even know. She isn't even privy to know how much the number is. So we don't know how much the number is, but it's not that much. I think it's more like a third of that or a quarter of that. Because she says the photo was done by a professional and they can see she's it. saying that. Yeah, she made, it's changed her life. She was living in a freaking garden shed before this. So what was Epstein like? Um, What was he like? Not that exciting, really. Um, I think, you know, like I've said before, Ghislaine was like the fun one in that, like, relationship. And he's just more work. He, I think he liked just hanging out more of sort of geeky kind of scientists rather than, like, fun people were you ever on epstein island no i was not invited um so no i was not on epstein island is that special people who get invited like the clintons people because there must be yeah. people because it's like people who met jimmy savile you wouldn't know he was a fucking people would have just seen him in a public right. got a photo so, of him. and i'm not saying everybody on epstein island are all the same so you've got to be you've got to understand if someone invites you to an island well, private plane you're thinking that sounds interesting but no. if you go back multiple times there's got to be question marks then. Well, the thing is, it's very easy for everyone to question this stuff now. But when you're living it at that moment, no one had anything bad. No one knew anything bad about Jeffrey Epstein. He was just like the fun guy with an <laughs> island and planes and and all the toys, you know, and nice invitations. Like, we didn't know anything back then. Like, it's very easy for, like, the public to go, oh, my God, why was she doing this? No, it was all kind of like normal back then. You wouldn't you wouldn't have any suspicions that anything was like out of the ordinary. Was Glenn was Maxwell and Epstein swingers? That I don't know. I really don't know, but I, I, I I'm guessing so. Because he was charged because he was mm. a maths teacher. Right. The, where people where they yeah. got his money from, people still don't know because he was well, a maths teacher. I think he was kind of kicked out because there was well, rumors he got, that he, like he got younger his girls money. Then. He got his money. So someone I know who was very close to him and knew him since he lived in a one bedroom. And he basically said to me recently, a few months ago, um, and he was friends with Jeffrey throughout, um, you know, the, his life really, since he was uh, working as a professor, was uh, working as a school, school math teacher. teacher. Math teacher, okay, so not really even the professor, but... He said, you know, he asked Jeffrey one day, he's like, how do you make all your money? And, um, and Jeffrey's response to that was like, he said, well, 
I'm the guy that recovers the money from people that cannot go to the police. And he was like, hmm. So basically, like, what it is, is that, you know, it's known that Jeffrey, he he helped a lot of these billionaires create these sort of charitable trusts. So it was a sort of, um, it was some kind of tax break. So they weren't paying taxes. So they would pay him in assets instead, hence they give him houses or different things. But I think like the code decipher from that message that Jeffrey said was, so just say someone who's a billionaire, they might be making money illegally, drug money or something. And someone's just run off with 500 million of their money. They can't go to the police. They go to Jeffrey. I don't know how Jeffrey recovers it. My take on that is Jeffrey was definitely with the CIA at some point. Like I've had friends in intelligence like say that to me. Um, I think he was CIA, CIA known to doing a lot of shady shit. And um, I think it got to a point where maybe he wanted to leave. And then they were like, oh, no, you're not leaving. We're just going to set you up. But obviously was charged as well a few years back of, what was he charged with, sex or assault? Or right. Girl he and was. I don't know the full story about that girl because... And that's what doesn't make sense because if he's charged yeah. with that and then you've got Prince Andrew going, it doesn't look good yeah. for any of them. Yeah, You've yeah, got to admit, yeah. it doesn't look good. But, but the, the problem is, you see, the the original thing, that was not a big story. Like, when that came out, that was half a page, maybe in the middle of a newspaper. No one gave a shit who Jeffrey Epstein was back then. He, he was not getting front pages. There was not... I mean, I remember vaguely seeing it because I remember thinking, oh, wow, I haven't, like, seen him in, you know, quite a few years. You know, is wonder what that story is about but didn't really think more of it you know and people don't remember that like they're like oh my god jeffrey epstein no it was very it was a very small story back then it was not front page news was there any whispers back then of trafficking no. kids being I mean, raped this, and killed or this word or tra that tra the, the, the word trafficking is way too conspiracy for me and you know mm. I'm a top conspiracy theorist and I literally get people I was in Barbados at Christmas I got people stopping me on the beach going oh my god I love your Instagram all your conspiracies come true um, so yeah I've had people literally that you know they were so against the things I said and then they were like yep you were right on that that and that Thank you so much. Um, waiting for my medal. Um, but uh, the word trafficking is such a strong word. And I've said that in all my interviews as well. I said, you know, when I think of trafficking, like I have friends that actually have charities helping traffic victims, which these are girls that are actually like kidnapped from their homes as children or kidnapped in a park and sold into trafficking in a brothel where they are raped all day long. And after that, when they're no use, they are sold for organs. That's trafficking. Trafficking, girls drinking champagne on the back of a yacht in Saint-Tropez ain't trafficking. Do you think a lot of these girls then are basically prostitutes? They basically are. No, they are prostitutes. So these girls, um, they're prostitutes, hookers, escorts, whatever you want to call them. See, I don't give a fuck if they're agreeing to it, but it's yeah. the underage ones. No, I don't these agree ones, with that shit. No, uh, but that's next level pedophilia. Yeah. I don't know about the girls that did not agree to it, but I've investigated the ones that clearly knew what they were doing. And Sarah Ransom, as an example, like I actually found her original pictures from her escort agency. So she actually got caught up in a whole nother scandal, which is the Pritzler scandal um, of, uh, that was like a couple of years before, but her name was hidden. But Anyway, yeah, these girls are hookers, man. Like, look at the pictures of them coming out of the water at the island. There's a picture of Sarah Ransom. She looks like a Bond girl. Like, this is not a girl that has been, like, chained up and raped all day. Why were you never invited to the island? I have no idea. I actually... um Would you have I, Well, I pretty much always had a boyfriend back then, so I wasn't really, like, single. Could have been your saving grace, though. Yeah, I wasn't really single, but... I don't believe like really bad stuff was going on. I mean, but you were never there, so you can't really. I wa I look, I wasn't there, but I feel like, you know, this is a rich dude with an island. 
inviting, yes, pretty girls. I don't think they were forced into anything. Um, but, you know, like, I mean, I remember when I was younger and this actually was a friend of mine and, you know, he was a real playboy. He he met this girl in, in like a nightclub. I think it was China White back then. Maybe her and some friends. Flew them to Monaco Grand Prix. Had them on his yacht. When they wouldn't sleep with him, he threw them off the boat. Like, this is what happens in that kind of level. It's like, it's pretty fucked up. Yeah, but if you're partying, guys are wanting And you know what he did? So then even worse, like not just like threw them off the boat, but actually then left them on the boat and went to a party and then threw them off. I was like, that is like really mean. Like, that's really mean. But then, you know... It, you don't go and stay with someone. You don't go to an island if you don't think that you're going to have to do something, maybe. See, for me, I, I, I'm against them because I, I'm but, a father. But again, but, I don't but, know But as answers, a but woman... Some, somebody told me about the Clintons as well. He was yeah. just a fucking old pervert as well. He liked... He, like, well, apparently, like, the only reason Bill was there all the time was, like, he was just escaping Hillary and he was having the affair Galan, apparently. So that's why he was there. Hillary's into women apparently as well. <laughs> so so they say. Um but uh yeah, I because I don't know if he's into young girls, but he was definitely having an affair with Galan for sure. What about Prince Andrew? You, you talk, they call him Randy and Andy. Again, listen, there's no any he's never and been charged with anything. Know, there's never he any got proof. Is he just a big school. kind of yeah. not a big daft guy, but is he just a guy like to party as well and just he doesn't um, party. This is the crazy he thing. He doesn't even drink. He's never even had a drink. I think he might have had one drink when he was like 11 or 12 and he picked up a glass that had alcohol in it, thinking it was water and gulped it and just like had the worst experience and never touched a drink again. So this is this is why this story is so crazy because this is not a party guy. Like, yeah, he's social and, you know, he was like the favorite, right? The favorite to the queen, kind of not as nerdy as Charles, sort of more fun, had the military career. So naturally, like he was popular with the, with the women. Like he didn't need to have Virginia Guffrey like paid. Can you, I mean, number one, like what I said before, that, that picture. So he's never carried a wallet in his life. And, um, you know, the Duchess of York, can vouch for that like she actually said to me he's never i've i've she's like she's known him her whole life he's never had a wallet like it, clearly in that photo in kinnerton street there's something in his back pocket he doesn't fucking can't even carry a wallet he doesn't drink alcohol so like the beginning of virginia's statement is like oh we were in tramp and like he got me a cocktail and we drank anyone that knows him and this is where the press really they think that this thing could have been stopped so early on. Like the press are invited to Buckingham Palace. Like they all know that Prince Andrew doesn't freaking drink. You know that every newspaper archive was trying to find those pictures of Prince Andrew coming out of tramps that night. There's no photo. He wasn't there. Like it's a lie. There's no way in 2001 anyone could be coming out of a nightclub that is as popular as Tramp Nightclub on a Friday or Saturday night without a million paparazzi. I mean, I lived it. I was out all the time and I had maybe 10 paparazzi like wrapped around my taxi when I'd be out. It's impossible. Didn't happen. Because that girl was obviously saying she was trafficked. And delaying the, trafficked the, the, this, this word trafficked is like, it's a new word that, that started being used by the lawyers involved in this whole scam of getting money from the Epstein estate. Um, Bradley Edwards started using it and David Boyd started using it because it just makes it all sound so much worse. Trafficking, trafficking, trafficking. Even people that I know, like, who really have been through abuse and stuff, they, they, I literally, they, they just send me emojis of crying, laughing faces. Like, what are these girls going on about trafficking? Bullshit. So she's 17 and he apparently slept with her then in that didn't house and he's never met her he's never met but why her was, why did the, the thing is his yeah. interview on the TV fucked yeah. him yeah, yeah, that it made did. him look like a fucking idiot it Let's did and now, and now they've you know they've made a TV show out of it yeah, and that comes out soon you know Scoop. I actually had a meeting with someone from Netflix last week and I'm just like yeah wait till you see what we've freaking got coming out soon you guys are going to feel like idiots like yeah I mean these people have now made a career 
out of it. Why would she, why was she allowed to do and that? And so I so basically, so that interview happened. The Duchess of York was in Saudi. She tried to stop it. Um, he's he's stubborn. He's his own man. He he saw it as this was going to completely clear him of everything. Um, I mean, I know this isn't really public or anything, but I don't know. I think maybe he's maybe on the spectrum because he can't. He's one of those people that can't lie. I think it comes across sometimes that he might be rude because, you know, there's been articles that people, staff that have worked there have said, oh, he's, you know, he's rude to us, whatever. I think it's just like, that is just the way he is. And he's just super direct. Like he's the kind of personality that is just not even capable of lying. So when he's asked, you know, do you regret your friendship with Jeffrey Epstein? He doesn't say, no, I don't. He's very honest. He's like, well, I, you know, do you remember what he said? He's like, I don't regret it. He, it brought me some good business de dealings or whatever it said. But, you know, a normal person would have gone, yes, I very much regret it. And, you know, da, 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 da. he was just super direct, can't lie. And I don't think it is, you know, there's no way someone like him would have gone done an interview like that if they weren't innocent. There's just no way just knowing the personality that we are dealing with, which is a military style, cannot lie to, type of person. I don't know if you've um, done them. But the problem is, if you, if you rewatch that interview, knowing he's innocent, you have a completely different experience. But nobody thinks he's innocent. Could you be naive to it all? No. I mean, I, I, I know what evidence I have, which we can release in a few months. Um, and uh, you know Virginia, basically, yeah, she's she's admitted that nothing ever happened with him. See, that's fucked up. Let's uh, imagine, imagine for talking's sake, everything you're saying is correct, mm. and that changes. Do you think everything I'm going to have a lot of people no, apologising to me? You would need that because yeah. what you're saying is a bit heavy. That nobody, I've never seen anybody stick up for any of them, yeah. anyone. So it's a lot of pressure, and but if you're wrong, <laughs> yeah. Well, it's a would, lot of pressure if I'm wrong. If you're wrong. I wouldn't be saying any of this stuff. If I, if I would not, like, why would I have been putting myself on the line if I didn't have concrete proof that this guy is innocent? Like, you know, for me to go against the Me Too movement in the beginning, now it's fine. Like, I literally, like, I get DMs all the time, like, from people who are DV, um, survivors, you know, domestic violence. And they're like, yeah, those girls are liars. Like they have ruined it for us because, you know, people that really are going through a rough time and they look at these girls milking millions of dollars from people and they're just parading around doing little interviews. Like people that have really gone through stuff like that, they're not parading around with their little stilettos and doing interviews and mm -hmm. looking like, no. No, it's because not. Because what I got from the interview, like you see, is either on the spectrum and, but, 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 or, or I think yeah. it maybe just thinks people are so dumbed down that we're the peasants and they can speak their way out of shit. So there's a bit of both, yeah. but it just seems so fucking strange. Yeah. Even the girls who produced it, they're thinking, somebody's going to sign this off and tell us not to put it out. He yeah. never had a lawyer with him. He yeah. had his daughter yeah. with him. No, there was no, there was someone from Buckingham Palace sitting in, in that interview. But they gave it the green light and oh, says, of course they did. And no, it, no, says no. it was amazing. Buckingham Palace. Well, because if you so if you go into that interview and watch it, knowing he's innocent, totally different experience. Like I rewatched it, knowing what I know, and I'm like, actually, it's really not that bad. But you have mateless barrister. It's the tone of it. It's like the even the color, the lighting, like. You can change a lot by that, by just the environment, you know, the but the way it's shot straight away, it's like this guy's not innocent the way it's filmed. But it was a no sweating, it was the it was on Pizza Express. But he really can't sweat. Like apparently that's like true. <laughs> but you understand yeah, it because yeah. there's a photo of him yeah. as well with his shirt on dripping in sweat. Well, where? So show that to look, me because it's, yeah, it's a yellow it's shirt true. in a nightclub. Yeah, I don't I'll think show so. You. Yeah, I'm, because I'm sure there, there was one that was circulating that I found the original. And then people online were like adding sweat to it, and then it was Maybe going so. online. Listen, I could be wrong, yeah. but I'm only judging from listen. You're je judging yeah. from what you yeah, see, yeah, of course. Yeah. And I'm very, listen. That's why you're here. Mm. I'm open minded to everything because yeah. I understand. But I, I found actually this one photo, and it was going around like you know online on 
whichever like social media and then i found the original which was the no sweat version and it's like oh fuck like net people are actually like adding that to make it look bad for him but i understand yeah pizza express apparently those parents who were the parents um that day didn't want to get involved you know that's a problem like a lot of people just ran away from this story because it had such a mark to it being associated with Jeffrey Epstein and Ghislaine Maxwell that everyone just ran away. Like no one wanted to deal. But the Epstein connection, nobody would have ever knew that existed if there wasn't a photo in Central Park. Mm. Nobody would have knew. No, probably. No. Yeah, there's nothing, no yeah. evidence to say they were ever with right. each other. I mean, that was, but that, there that was a makes setup them look for bad. sure. But that makes them look bad. That makes me also question because obviously Jeffrey Epstein, they says they had cameras in every room. From the, my mind, I think, was he mm. got something on Prince Andrew. For him to be there with a convicted paedophile and spend days with him, you're thinking, well, wait a minute, are you one also? And you've got to understand that's mm. the normal mindset. Mm. And I'm not daft. I would question it. But yeah, I think... I think not doing any justice there. I think that photographer, that was definite fucking stitch up. Like, Epstein definitely, like, coordinated that somehow to get those pictures. Um, I think it was, like basically a blackmail the royal family look if jeffrey epstein planned to get those pictures made of kinnerton street and because he was in on this whole conspiracy right he you know he was planning to take down the royal family and this is like a very serious thing you know i feel like the royal family right now is under attack right now with everything that has been going on like what so many of them would like Sonny dropping down with cancer all at the same time. Like, what do you think about that? They seem to be at their weakest, especially with the mm. Queen dying, especially yeah. with the Prince Andrew stuff, especially with Prince Harry mm. leaving. Yeah. They don't seem to be... Listen, the royal family's always mm. going to be a force. Mm. No doubt they'll, they'll manage to get through what they're going through, but this mm. seems to be the most difficult time mm. for and the I royal just family. think, you know, for the Queen, you know, people say this to me sometimes. They're like, Victoria, you know, wh why are you doing this? Why are you trying to help him so much? And... Yes, of course, I want to help him, having known him a long time, but I'm doing this for my country. Like, I'm doing this for the Queen. Like, the Queen died never knowing that her son was cleared of, you know, these allegations. And it just makes me really sad. But again, the outer court settlement doesn't look good either. Well, you know what? So in America, civil cases, that they happen every day. Um, you'd be surprised how many how many guys have to pay these girls off all the time. Um, Virginia Maria have, have, they have had other ones, which we haven't seen come into the public domain, but it happens a lot. Um, people like David Boys are specialists in this. They literally have a stable of girls that they just pull out for different lawsuits and like, oh, right. Okay. You're going to go sue that person. And, and they do these out of court things. Um, civil cases, I don't think are as big in England, but US it's, um, very popular, you know, I noticed like in L.A., the last few years, especially because it's such a litigious state, California, that, you know, when you entered like a big, just say it was a big house party of like a billionaire or some very wealthy, like you have to sign something going in that you're not going to sue them because, you know, you have not even something that is a sexual assault or but you have someone say, oh, they slipped on your ground and you're going to sue them you know, million dollars or whatever. So, you know, it's um, Americans, like, they love to sue for anything. But like you say, it's when mud sticks, and it wasn't just one thing, you kind of go, okay, it mm. was the meeting the Epstein for days, it was the paying the girl off, it was all the well, photos. Well, we don't wrong. know how Yeah, I know, but days. that's all yeah. the stuff. Yeah. That, that's all yeah. the information. And, he's, and then he's going out for his meetings, right? And people like, always question not... the royal family yeah. anyway. Uh, they always questioned that there was corruption under ground uh, tunnels and all the conspiracy yeah. theories. Uh, People believe although, that. Although, although I got to say, Getty Museum, I'm, I'm, I'm very curious to know if there's tunnels under that. Mm. It's been a rumor about that for years. But why are you putting everything on the line? Because you're very outspoken for I'm, them, I'm, and you seem to be. Wrong. Is there anybody else on your side doing the same? No, I'm the only one. Do you become a target? Um. A target by from who? I don't know. People, but powerful men out there. You know how it mm. operates. Look at Epstein. Mm. 
The fuck camp down. How did he commit suicide in a 24 hour watch cell? Yeah, no, he definitely did not commit suicide. What do you um, think happened to Epstein? Um, I, the same as what I've been saying for a while. So I actually posted the, um, I put the pictures, you know, the, the pictures of like the dead body when he died. It was, you know, they were, they were online. You, you had to kind of dig for them. But so when I put those up online, I, I had a couple of people reach out to me on DM Instagram. And people that are actually experienced of like working with dead bodies. And straight away, uh, the first girl said to me, she's like, he did not lie. He did not die hanging. If you have the liver spots like on your back, like the way he has, that is you died lying down. There's no way you get those marks on your back from hanging. So that like, I started like really questioning it after that. I was like, wow. And then I started researching, well, if you're hanging, would your legs be swollen? Your ankles would be swollen and um, every, your body would be swollen basically. Now, when you saw that dead corpse of Jeffrey Epstein's, very slim ankles, very slim legs, that guy did not die hanging. Um, the other thing, which is like, really obvious is that they say he hung himself with a piece of bed sheet which the piece of bed sheet had no blood on at all when you see his neck he's literally got he's had almost like a wire put into his neck um where you can see like the the blood and the flesh so like that's complete that's a complete lie um the woman who was in charge of that investigation it was interesting to see that she um she uh, retired recently. Um, but yeah, this was a complete uh, fraudulent. Um, uh, well, yeah, he was not, he was definitely murdered. What sort of information did he have then? I don't know. He must I'm have had sure. some serious shit for that mm. to happen. Yeah. But that's not, well, but that, well, that, that's, it, that's the interesting thing. I did see that interview um, that his brother did. And that's the thing, like, who. I wonder, like, who killed him? Like, there's this, there's so many people that could have been after him, right? And especially if the things that he was doing, like these illegal operations that he was doing with, I'm pretty sure there's, like, a drug connection that hasn't been unsealed yet by the media, but he was definitely, like, doing some deals with drug dealers, like, high level. Yeah, drug lords. Um, yeah. So, yeah, there's a lot of people that would have wanted him dead. Yeah, because of the information he had. Well, the other drug running story I heard was that is like also one of the reasons why he was friends with a lot of like politicians and stuff because he needed people flying with him that had diplomatic passports so the aeroplanes were not searched. Yeah, but it's kind of all crazy. And like you say, listen, I respect mm. you for coming on and backing those people. For mm. me, I, obviously, I think. Epstein's a wrong in if I'm honest. I think yeah. he's a, a, a duck yeah, no, I, 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 Prince I Andrew, think. I don't know, but <clears throat> it doesn't look good with all the information yeah. that I had. It just does not look good yeah. for him. Was he just an old guy? Not old, but liked to party and liked his women. Mm. None were underage. He could have been I mean, sleeping. partying with a glass of water. Do you yeah, know what I mean? Like, like, see, I, I, yeah. I, I, I was never there. Mm. I don't know. Yeah. I, but for all the information, you kind of think, nah, his mannerisms, you think, nah, there's something off. Mm. Doesn't look right, but... Mm. The Jimmy Savile thing and involved with the royal family. What about, but what, what's that got to do with it? No, but again, it's just when these guys are involved in with the family and they're stuck with Prince. Right. Um, but but you see, you know, like we all know Jimmy Savile, like we all know about him now, but would we have known what year was that happening in? Was that like in the 80s? 80s, or, 90s, until he died. But, but in the 80s, we didn't have like, we didn't have the media that we have now. Like now with like social media we mm. can find out anything we don't we didn't even have google back then like but it must have been vetted he's got to have been vetted he because he had question so. marks when he was a dj i think yeah. um, johnny rotten exposed him and this was 20 30 years ago mm. so it just it makes people question it well yeah. he's one of the biggest sex cases mm. to never be charged right um, and listen, uh, there's people saying that's never guy, been charged. Like, that guy should have freaking gone down properly i mean the stories that i heard about jimmy savile is just Absolutely. Didn't he like break girls in like hospitals? Dead like, bodies. And he was at, he owned, he, he owned like well, three hospitals. De but de well, dead bodies, but like mentally sort of challenged yeah. young girls that couldn't speak out. And There's a girl who drew a, drew a photo scream. of them. So this well, maybe is, they were like, like they couldn't speak. But this I is mean, the that thing. is like yeah, super that's sick. sick. But this is the thing. 
when you see him with photos and all these royalties, mm. it just makes you question mm. all these people in power have so much money to do not enjoy the money anymore, but they need to do some sick shit. Now you can go down to the adrenochrome look. You can I, again, I don't know. Yeah, Listen, it's all hopeful, I but, think that's full on Q and on stuff. I mean, I, I feel like I feel like some of that definitely happens in Hollywood, though, for sure. I don't know if it's like Mel Gibson that spoke out about that, but yeah, you you, you mentioned that. In but England it does raise eyebrows you. because we're all intrigued. Right. A lot of people live an average life of working mm. nine to five and going home and watching EastEnders. Right. So when people are speaking <laughs> about this, you're thinking, <laughs> yeah, you're thinking, wow, like I say, I don't know. Yeah. When you start speaking to enough people, yeah. eventually it sinks in, you think, yeah. oh, wait a minute, the, 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 the earth is run by fucking But the problem is, the, pro the problem is this psyop of, of the, the QAnon stuff, which is a complete freaking psyop. Like, that has literally taken over a lot of people's minds. Like, I, I believe... A lot of conspiracies but that stuff literally like i have a friend of mine like he barely leaves the house anymore he's you know he thinks he's saving the planet and he's part of this q mission and like <laughs> he it's it, he's gone yeah. you know he, he thinks that jfk's alive he thinks diana's alive yeah you know, see, that's too much i for mean me. yeah. you know some of them like yeah. they literally believe that like all these people are going to come back alive and like i'm like you know i mean there's some things we which we can question about is Michelle Obama a man or a woman? Like, that's a good one. Because I don't know. What do but you think about but, that? But again, we don't know everything. You see the photos. But again, we see the Prince Andrew photos doctored. Yeah. You're saying. So how mm. do they know they're not doctored? Again, it's, who gives a fuck if she's a man? Mm. Really? Mm. Who cares? The world's round or flat again. Only thing it concerns me, I don't give a fuck. It doesn't stop my life if it's round or flat. But I just question, what's the life for? Why the big lie about it? Why the mm. big tale? Why why is it? Because we only get taught from mm. textbooks. We're programmed for a very young age. Believe this, believe this, believe this, believe this. When you step back and question it, he's crazy. She's crazy. Mm. It's the ones who are fucking crazy who make the changes. I know. But I've got to, you've genuinely got to stay open And you see, this is the thing. Like, mm. just say one of these Epstein girls, Maria Farmer, like, the kind of art that she paints is really sick. It's like super perverted of like young naked children and stuff. I don't know if you're familiar with her art, but it's really like kind of really creepy and gross. And George, um, the guy, the whistleblower guy, he said to me, he's like, yeah, it's almost like they all in that act, um, act out like they're sort of creepy, weird fantasies with like kids and stuff. So, yeah. Because you were in a room with, were you in a room with Trump, Clinton, Epstein, Prince well, Andrew? Tr Trump and Clinton were good friends. Like people forget that those two were were really good friends for a while. Actually, um, Trump at the time was a Democrat, and so that's how he managed to get a lot of their secrets, really, and then basically got all their secrets, and then turned Republican. <laughs> Went fuck you guys, I'm gonna like spill the beans. Um, but yeah, I love Trump. I, I just really hope for America that he's going to win and come back. Do you think it matters who's in, in charge? Do you think it's the people behind them who pull the strings? Obviously, you get companies now like BlackRock, the Bilderbergs, or mm. um, who else you've got? Mm -hmm. All these rich families who have just... Well, George Soros is a lot Soros, of power. Soros, you've got... Um, who's Rothschild, Gettys. Rothschilds. And, but again, people say there's now people bigger than them. How the fuck can we trust anybody? Who who who, who really matters? If it's left wing, right wing, who mm, cares? Mm. Who's prime minister, president? Well, well, what really is, changes? Well, this is what I said. So, like when I was living in America, I wasn't I wasn't like Republican or Democrat. I just was voting for the right person, and I thought could change the country in a better way. Um, you know, like if you look at just say the deep state, right? The deep state is not a party. The deep state can be Democrat or Republican. It doesn't matter. Like Obama, Clinton and Bush, they're on the same team. But it's all people arguing and fighting. Go live your life. No matter who's in charge, live your fucking life. Mm. For me, people need to learn how to grow their own fruit and veg. The, the, how the world can be shut down yeah. in a heartbeat and people mm -hmm. don't know how to fucking grow a potato. Mm -hmm. People would die. If all the supermarkets shut you down... Would, you would die right now if I told you what I've been up to. <laughs> so I've actually been... Uh, I'm newly in the fruit and be veg business right now, actually. Um, so I've been in fashion my whole life, but I had an opportunity come to me last year and a friend of mine, he calls me up, he's from Texas and he goes, Hey Vix, I got a, I've got a, I've got something for you. 
So he's like direct with 150, 200 farms in Costa Rica, Mexico, all over South America, Africa, um, different regions in Africa. And um, so, yeah, so we're now working together. And um, all I'm, I literally was on a Zoom call till 1 a.m. talking fruit and veg last night. <laughs> so, but yeah, I agree with you. I think, especially after the last few years, um, the COVID years, I think this taught a lot of us that we need to be able to survive on our own. Like we need, we need a water source. We need, we need to be able to grow our own food because suddenly like the fact that, you know, when we went to the supermarket and suddenly there's nothing on the shelves, like, what are we going to do? Like, who's going to feed us? Stock up toilet paper. So just I, I do. I, I actually have like a lot. That was the craziest of thing paper. I'd ever seen in my life. <laughs> People running out of toilet paper and that's the first thing they buy. Yeah. Not buying fucking pastas or yeah. uh, tin food to keep them their supply going. They're buying toilet paper. Yeah. And that's how dumbed down people can be. The world I know. Is. And the thing about well, the UK, people, people are quite freak smart. out, right? We're quite smart here, though. We're, we are on it compared mm. to most. We are quite, we're, we're quite sane. Like people speaking, we kind of know something not quite right. Same as the Andrew interview. That's the characteristics that mm. just seem off to the average person. But again, he's not an average person yeah. raised up in that royal family, and it's not that I'm sticking up for him. But I'm trying to look at all kind of fields. But what do you actually think the whole thing is? Why do you think Epstein's dead? Why do you think Andrew done the interview? Why do you um, think Mac I think I think Epstein. I think Epstein was working for the CIA and the CIA are trying to dismantle the British monarchy. I think that um, he set Andrew up. Andrew was the easy target, and um, he faked the photo with Virginia, and um, he was doing a lot of illegal dealings, um, drugs, arms, all kinds of stuff, and. I don't know who killed him, but he was definitely killed. I think Galen is the scapegoat, didn't really know what 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 she was doing or what was going on. And the girls were all in love with Jeffrey Epstein. Um, so, yeah, I mean, I don't think Jeffrey was particularly, he definitely was not innocent at all. Like, you know, but I don't think Galen deserves to be where she is right now. When was the last time you spoke to Galen? Um, it's been a couple of years. Did you hear from her when the shit hit the fan? No, no. I, 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 I have um, one of her lawyers' uh, info that I can communicate through. What do you think of people getting cloned in that? Do you think that's about bit Cloning? Yeah. Um, is this related to, uh, Just not related to Epstein? Of, people, no. say, make, people say make, Epstein might be alive or... People uh, say like oh, the P. Oh, is that alive? No, 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 no. People are saying the, I, the bodies change and people change, and it's yeah. So that was really weird, right? Like when we saw the pictures of um, Jeffrey's head, I think it was when he died, and like the ear looked different. But apparently, like when we die, different parts of our body like it changes shape because like his nose looked different and the ear looked different. So I don't know. I mean, I don't, I don't, I don't think he is alive, guys. I really think, um, you know, I don't think he's hanging out on an island right now with Tupac and Princess Di. Bob I don't Marley. think that's happening. <laughs> that is crazy. Well, people do go down that route. But people go fever. down yeah. major rabbit holes, and you know, like my friend that thinks you know JFK is still alive, and like you know, guys, come on, like there's real and there's real. Yeah. But it is a very dark world we live in. There is a lot of fucking. It is. And you know, there. as far as like, you know, why I get defensive on the word trafficking, right? So I, as a as an example of, of real trafficking, not girls on yachts in Saint Tropez, um, a friend of mine, he does like a lot of like uh, contracting, government contract kind of work. He's sort of like a real version of James Bond. And he goes to places like Thailand and rescues little children from these things called red rooms. Do you know what that is? Yeah, because you used to have a red rooms in London, apparently. No, no, no. So this is um, so this is a thing, right, in Thailand where uh, different people will buy um, a spot in a red room with crypto so they can't be traced. A red room in Thailand is a room where a child is murdered every three weeks. Uh, they are sacrificed. And the person that pays with the crypto gets to choose how that kid is murdered. And the other person gets to do things to them. Now, that is trafficking. That is murder, rape, trafficking. Girls lying on a boat in Saint-Tropez with a glass of champagne and being able to go back to a villa when they want. That is not trafficking. 
So do you think when a lot of the, the heat gets put on these guys, they'll come forward for money? Is that what you're saying? Um, I think with everything, it's money. Everything is money driven in this sort of situation. I think witnesses, they see the dollar signs and they come forward. You know, it happened with actually another interesting thing that I got to do when I lived in LA. I actually sat in the courtroom in Harvey Weinstein's trial and I'd never sat in a courtroom in my life. Like that was a first for me. I went with an uh, independent journalist friend of mine who had sat through Galen's trial and she's like, come, like today's going to be exciting. It's Jennifer Newsom being cross-examined, who's Gavin Newsom's wife and, you know, the governor of California. So this was like, this is pretty hot ticket. And we get into the courtroom. We've got to put our mobile phone in this sort of little pouch thing that locks as soon as you press it. And, um, you know, I watched that girl being caught out lying. And I'm like, now look, Harvey Weinstein was quite, he, 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 he had, you know, he was known as fairly prolific in, you didn't go to his room if you weren't going to hook up with him. You just knew that. Like, you knew that. I knew that 20-something years ago. Don't, don't go there, right? The girls that did go there, they knew what they were signing up for. And that is like, I sat in that courtroom. This girl got busted, basically. They put up all these emails that she'd written to him. Now, if someone has supposedly raped you, would you normally like message them like a week later and go, when can I see you? I'm going to be in New York for one night. Let's meet up. Does that so sound like someone that's just been raped and traumatized? No, like this girl wanted him to give her a career and she was like sending him scripts and inviting him out. And so I looked at this man who was like the shell of what he used to be. Very thin, very thin face, very pale. And um, yeah, it was, it was like when you read stuff in the media, even the stuff from that court that day, they're going to report that differently to what I actually saw in that courtroom and experienced. What about R. Kelly? Oh, he's, R. Kelly deserves everything he, he's got there. Like, Why are you not sticking up for him? <laughs> not sticking up for R. Kelly, no, because like that guy is like, there's not one little, there's not one centimeter of innocence. He was well known in the industry. Mm. He should have been arrested years ago. He done have a deal with a fourteen year old or something. It's disgusting. So why what did he, he did? Why did he? I mean, wasn't get... he like he, he was actually like kidnapping them, wasn't he? Yeah, he was trafficking. He was yeah. That now that that I would say is like definitely more of a trafficking situation. Like his situation compared to like an Epstein or whatever is like dip, totally different. But at the start of the, the podcast as well, we were talking about kids coming from the broken home girls. Mm. That's grooming, and of course, but that is grooming as well. Yeah, but again, I, you can buy into the lavish lifestyle. Yeah. But these guys are manipulating these girls, well, and, and well, everybody's got free water. Well, it's just like then a guy. And then it's down to them, like you say, hookers, yeah. strippers, whatever the fuck it is. I used to party back in the day for fuck's yeah. sake. I don't give a fuck. We were having well, look, the best any time guy, any guy knows, any guy with any brain knows that they're going to be able to manipulate a girl much more from a freaking broken home. There's no mother waiting at home for them to come home at night. Oh, darling, what time are you coming back from your dinner date? You know, they're going, they're going home to a drug addict mom who's probably like whacked out on heroin, doesn't even realize the daughter's gone. You know, this is why they target that. Like, of course, and those are the kind of girls that they're searching for something. They're searching for love. They don't have any love at home, so they're like, yearning that or they need to make money they needed to survive like their their parents are not home the dad's in jail the mother's like prostitute or something like yeah so they they are really um easy targets for sure puff daddy be daddy mm. you you're kind of having his back for me i'm the opposite well if I'm honest. i wouldn't say like completely got his back i put out a post yesterday because it's been like it's been on the back of my mind for uh, a while now actually and I just I wanted to just put out because you you put a post up and it was that that kind of really sort of triggered it for me that you know you put this post of him talking to this young girl who that girl is friends with his youngest son so it's not him freaking 
you know, yes, he's he's not got a he's look, he's called he calls himself a bad boy, bad boy records. This guy has never called himself squeaky clean. He can have sex with who he wants. That I don't think anyone should like worry about. The fact is we should worry about if he's actually like hurting somebody. If he wants to sleep with men, women, whatever, like doesn't affect us. If he wants to do drugs, doesn't affect us. Um, but, you know, to put out a video saying he's sex trafficking, like that is obscene. You know, anyone that has been to parties at his houses, there's no freaking sex trafficking. It's a party. It's a party. He has an alcohol brand. He knows how to have fun. But the FBI just went to the house. The housekeepers, there were two kids. Like, it's not some crazy tunnel for your QAnon friends. I'm sorry. But they're saying he could potentially be the next Epstein. They figured yeah, that video with a young girl. Epstein. And I did say it was yeah. his daughter's friend, but as a father myself, it's the characteristics. It's the making the girl feel uncomfortable. As a man, mm. I would never sit with a 12 year old know. line. I'd think, that's creepy for me as a man. Who's right. A, 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 well, like, the, th the thing is as well. And he looked so, intoxicated. So, it doesn't mean he's a fucking yeah, trafficker or a pedophile, no. but it's creepy. I mean, the thing is, you know, he is a good dad and that's what I wanted to put out there. Like he always had his mother on the holidays. Kim, pa Kim Porter, who has like what, four children with four. him. Um, even when he was dating Cassie, Kim was always there on the holiday. You know, that was going to cause friction. Like Cassie always knew he's in love with Kim. Like she never had any kids with him. She didn't have anything that would tie her down with him. Kim was the love of his life. And, you know, when she died, he also lost Andre Harrell, who was um, also a very good friend of mine. He was the guy that uh, basically discovered discovered Puff Daddy, uh, Sean Coombs. And he had a pretty rough time. I think they both died within about six months of each other. Um, in 2020, I think it was. Right, and maybe did she die in 2019 and then him 2020? But um, yeah, look, he can party and take ecstasy like that's not going to affect us um i don't think he is a bad meaning person like he can get high or whatever but that video i think it was just a bit taken out of context you know because he does the thing is you or i wouldn't be having a wild house party with 11 year olds in our that's house weird. out of our minds right mm. but he would and that's just but that's like, weird that's the way that he yeah, does it but that doesn't make it acceptable yeah that's still fucking right, weird if right. you like if you got any kids do you have any no, kids i don't but if you did would you have them doing that at a party do you know what i'm saying well because you haven't yeah. got in it's hard to answer yeah. as a father it's fucking weird if i see yeah. someone doing that to my daughter he's getting a bullet in the head and yeah, that's yeah. not to be tough because <laughs> yeah. i'm a protector yeah i'm not going to have how kids old is your daughter 13 oh so gosh. i'm a father so it's my job is to provide and protect yeah and i'll do that i was sitting in a cell doing life not a fucking problem no yeah. blinking i if i knew i was protecting the family yeah for me it was just it's not that's not what a man does mm. and we can say he drinks and yeah. parties doesn't make yeah. it acceptable yeah. and the, obviously you've got that's the, just that lifestyle yeah. i mean we don't weird. have start yeah hollywood yeah madness, like, hollywood is, is but a the crazy biggie, place two pack people are saying that he could have been involved he, he mm. does seem he wants to be king of the castle and he was mm. for a very long time yeah. paying cassie what i think people say up to 30 million dollars she says mm. she was raped to traffic again it could be bullshit mm. just for money mm. having usher at his house at 13 having the young girls now it's come out Again, it could all be a setup. Again, I, I genuinely don't know mm. for for his brands that he has because he's a billionaire. He's loaded, so yeah. I just, it I just doesn't I, look I'm, good. Try, I'm trying to like figure out who are the people who are benefiting from this takedown. I think that's always the way to look at it. Like, who are they? You know, um, is it the alcohol brand that wanted to cut a relationship with him because he was getting paid too much? You know. Like like I said before, same thing that happened to John Galliano, totally set up because um, he was asking too much money. They're paying him too much. Okay, let's just get rid of him. Mm -hmm. um, so, you know, the the hip hop world um, in the US, you, you've got the Crips and the Bloods and they hate each other. They kill each other every day. And so obviously the rappers on the other side, you've got 50 Cent and stuff and 
they fucking they're, they're rejoicing right now. I know you he got fifty that. cents. So it's a, they're like partying, like fireworks. Yay. <laughs> Because, you know, 50 Cent, um, I love 50 Cent. I think he's awesome. But I think he he had a hard time at some point and I think blew all his money and stuff. And then they're probably looking at Diddy like, fuck this guy. Like, he's living this, you know. But, um, yeah, I met 50 Cent. I'm trying to think. Oh, Cannes Film Festival a couple of years ago. That was it. Very smiley. Lots of very smiley guy. But has, has yeah. son's mum yeah. apparently she was working with Puff oh, Daddy right, right. and that's where it comes from because she's on the indictment he was she was like a sex worker for oh. him and that's Puffy's son's mum right. and again I don't know all the ins and outs it is a bit no. petty a lot of this stuff right. but we get caught up in it because it is big news right. and like you say it could be a massive takedown maybe mm. he is just a fucking party boy but yeah. it doesn't look good for him no. from the outside then you've got Jay-Z he's getting yeah. his own island he met Beyonce when she was young he met yeah. signed Rihanna when oh, she's right. young well, and there's he, he, more rumours yeah, of mean, that people can start and they two are best friends why is he not coming out well, and supporting these well, best people friends people can start saying that Jay Z's a groomer. He grooms his artists and then marries them. Like it, it, it's all you know. The entertainment world is a really seedy world. It is, mm -hmm. uh, especially Hollywood. You know, did and start the music off? Did industry. They start, did start, because apparently somebody from I the mean, CIA started hip hop because they knew it would brainwash kids into violence and hate and rage, smoking weed, no, no, fighting. No, the CIA and it's just, and they're run still Hollywood. Doing it. Yeah, of course. And they're still doing it. Yes. It's just another defense, yeah. another mechanism to brainwash exactly. kids to normalize that fucked up life. Yeah. And like I said, no, that's the thing. Like the CIA, like they control all of this. Like, these, you know, these TV shows that are promoted, like the Kardashians being role models and all of this, this is all freaking CIA. Like, what, we've got role models of girls with, like, these fake bums and big lips and nails like this, and, like, kids think that this is, like, they've all got to go out and get butt implants now. Mm -hmm. Like, what is wrong with the world? This is, like, so sick. It's mad. Like, like I say, if I stick up for that, then... But I'm it is. It's the CIA yeah. runs Hollywood. Like, they, they own they own all the big agencies there. They own, you know, the, the, between the Chinese and the CIA, they own Hollywood. They own all the studios. What if it comes out about Diddy that he, he is as bad as they make out? Would you apologise? Um, of course I would. Well, if I, I, But if you look at my post, I said, if the thing about Cassie is true, I'm horrified. So I actually, like, if... if someone actually reads the mm -hmm. post properly like i i'm i'm just i'm showing like both sides and i'm like wow if this is true like this is horrifying and just awful yeah because you, you know? weren't with them 24 7 there's men no. out there who are groomers and fucking i've, I've had uh, 500 I, interviews there's going to be some dirty wrongs <laughs> come on do you know what i'm saying yeah. I'm under the radar. i go yeah he's sound but I'm only judging them from appearance I, i've been at I, many i'm parties. judging i'm judging from what i saw but like you know over the years, I went to Super Bowl parties at the house, or I went to New Year parties at the Miami house, or yacht parties in, in St. Bart's. But, you know, whenever I was there, like, at a party, like, his kids are there, his mom's there, his old best friends are there. Since Kim Porter died, I haven't really, I haven't seen him since really, like, around the COVID years. Kim died, Andre Harrell. Her, Andre was really, like... um who we would always hang out all together. Um, so when he passed, I I just really haven't like seen him. Who's the best celebrity you've ever came across? Um, I've got a few funny stories. I um I organized this event in Cannes for the film festival. Um, I think it was about 10 years ago, a bit more maybe actually, 10, 15 years ago. And my job was to get like seven big celebrities. I had six weeks to do it. And a friend of mine from this production company, he's like, Victoria, I need your help. Like, with your name, they're going to answer on the email. I'm like, okay, let's do this. <laughs> so, but I, I knew quite a lot of people. And it was a celebrity poker festival. And, you know, the actors were getting nice paycheck. They were getting a payment to their charity of choice. Private jets, houses rented for them in Cannes. It was, it was kind of like cushy job. And... I'd never done this before. And I thought, okay, I'm now casting director. Let's do this. So Dennis Hopper was my first signing. We had our list of like people that we wanted. And I thought, I'm going to go with the eldest one, the most respected actor that the other ones would want to sign on. Because that's the thing, right? You need to have those first kind of 
first two and then the others just come. And you know what? That was the best thing I ever did, getting someone that was respected. Dennis already had like two movies in Cannes that year. And so the fact that they were throwing this villa at him and a jet and stuff, like he was like, I'm doing it. Um, the funniest story from that was I had Woody Harrelson had been filming on a closed set in Bucharest. And I met up with his manager in um, West Hollywood she hands me this Dolce Gabbana suit and this pair of vegan shoes. And she's like, you need to bring this to him or he's going to show up in the shorts in shorts and flip flops. So <laughs> I get to Cannes and sure enough, I meet him in the lobby of his hotel and there he is in shorts and flip flops, like about an hour before the event. And I'm just like, I hand it over to him. I'm like, here you go. <laughs> get dressed now. <laughs> he actually ended up winning. But I ended up, yeah, I had Tim Robbins, Adrian Brody, Selma Hayek, Ed Norton, um, Goldie Horn. Yeah, it was it was a it was a pretty cool event. It's not that they've got man stories. Woody Harrison's dad was a murderer. Uh, Tim Robbins was also a drug a drug smuggler oh, back in the day. Right. Yeah, they've got mad mad powerful stories. Woody Harrelson, I know. There's like yeah, the, dad, the, the dad, dad was it the something? dad or the brother? Dad. Mm. He's a hitman or something like wow. that. And it's amazing to actor. overcome that unbelievable yeah. actor. Yeah. Um, what do you think of all that life? Do you see a lot of changes in people when the fame and money comes? Do they change? Does um, a dark entity take over them? Or I, have they always got that in them? I don't know. Like, I guess some people do change. Um, but, you know, if there's someone that I know and I've known for a while, I, I, I feel like people always remember that you've known them for a long time so they don't really change with you, mm -hmm. why, you have know? Never, why have they never released the epstein flight logs why is that a big why a big I secret thought, i thought the flight logs i have a, there's a bunch of flight logs that are online i think with tom hanks and obviously the Clintons. okay tom hanks now getting into conspiracy is like i definitely like so what was the name of the guy that died remember like that whole story and tom hanks did that very cryptic tweet about mm -hmm. it that actor that basically was trying to warn people about tom hanks yeah yeah i seen the video done they done the suicide oh, a couple of days later yes yeah, 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 yeah. now he looked, that he looked tired or he looked unwell yeah that was very strange no? but they're saying that hanks because we're apparently going to cyprus because again it's is it conspiracies mm. but again pizza gate you can go down the rabbit hole when it does. I believe in Pizzagate, by the way. But it's mad to, for you to then, because you're, it's I not believe as if in you're that. on the fence, but you're. No, I'm not on the fence, but I believe, you see, this is like, this is part of the psyop, right? There's a lot of, there's real stuff out there and then there's fake stuff and it's all mixed together. And then you've got to figure out which of these things are real and which of these things are fake. But how do we know? How will we ever know? Well, Unless just it comes from, from that horse's mouth. Yeah, again, but again, the stuff that you can say, be saying is full of shit and same as me, we both could be full of shit. It's <laughs> fucking crazy because how do we then, we perceive and, and then take different well, facts people it, see? Well, did, did you ever read the emails? From who? Um, that, that were part of like in the Julian Assange, you know, all the data that he released. Mm -hmm. So like some of those emails from Hillary Clinton and stuff talking about basically human sacrifices and calling you know the, yeah, some yeah. of the stuff 70, was in code e 70 thousand emails or something yeah but like the stuff about you know young boys had a had a special code name for the for the hot dogs i think yeah. they were called the hot dogs and the pizza um i know i saw a lot of those photos i mean a lot of it got scrubbed you know from instagram and stuff of those kids that disappeared in that whole pizzagate thing yeah i've interviewed people who was in I mean, you saw it, right? You know those original, they were put up on that guy's Instagram and obviously deleted, but you can find that stuff on like Telegram or whatever. But pictures of like little kids that were like dressed up. Yeah, I interviewed. And then and they were like, then they had tape over their mouth yeah. and they were like taped down and stuff. But I interviewed the man who was involved in The Sound of Freedom. Oh, okay. He was a billionaire, Love that movie. Un undercover billionaire. and. Mm. Again, but then the guy, Tim, who was in it now, was sexual claims coming out about him. Oh, so no. how the fuck? But then everybody then deflects. I know. How do you then they'll say it's a matrix attack? Mm. Or they're coming after me because you're exposing this. But did they already know 
they were coming after him anyway, so they yeah. jump on this train to yeah, try and yeah. deflect and get people on their side. Yeah. I don't know, there's a lot of fuckery in the world, mm. but there's a lot of beautiful mm. stuff in the world as well. Yeah, I mean, the thing is, I think stuff, information gets thrown out, put out there, and some of it's real and some of it isn't, and it's kind of our job. We just have to kind of figure out which which stuff is true because... They want us to run with a completely wrong story and then go, oh, no, that isn't true. So this person can't be talking the truth. So mm -hmm. there's a lot of like red herrings out there as well, which that was happening during COVID all the time, right? Misinformation. Yeah. Um, so along with a lot of stuff that was real, then there would be other stuff that was put out that was not real. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Like, that's why anybody watching or listening, question everything, question what yeah. you are saying. And like and I say, just, this, is a health, this is a healthy research. conversation. This is a healthy discussion. Like yeah. you say, we're not agreeing, disagreeing. There's things that I agree with, but there's, it's just a discussion mm. with the information that we have in life. Yeah. Where do you go forward for the future with it all? What's your YouTube and stuff? I know you're trying to get yeah, videos Yeah, so stuff. Um, I, uh, yeah, I need to build up my YouTube. It's um, at Lady Victoria Harvey. That's H-E-R-V-E-Y. People ain't mad. <laughs> and daft. Instagram is Lady Victoria Harvey as well. I know, but like some people get confused with, you know, they call me Hervey. And it's like, I've had that since school. So if I say Harvey, they put H A, but it's H E. So everyone. Um, but yeah, I think it sort of comes from French originally, RV. Yeah, so I'm Scottish, yeah. Yeah, so, I've got I've got Scottish in me actually. That's where I get my height from. Maybe Scottish that's what the fuck happened to my height. Then. <laughs> <laughs> but you've got you. I would. You're a very staunch person. You're very. You're very strong. You're very. This is what I believe, and mm. I, you've got the balls to fucking say it. And that takes mm. courage, especially in this day and age. You don't need to be at the forefront. Yeah, Just try to stick up for Andrew. Well, I feel like yeah. Since since what 2020, I feel like I'm being in the the battle scene and. Um, you know, it's not the COVID battle anymore, but it's just getting the right information out. And for me, it's sort of like now become a duty because I've had some key witness people and they've reached out to me because I've been the one that has been vocal about it. And because I have a public profile, they trust me. They know I'm not going to mess, you know, mess them over like I'm not a journalist. Um and they trust me with information and with that information now i am helping get it out for them have you ever been questioned over anything being friends with no, all these people i mean questioned about what just being friends with them like say no. met epstein andrew maxwell mm -mm. high profile cases no you know these saying? people these people it's all talk right like that the fake photo thing like the fbi never even had the picture like it was a copy of the fake photo was put on a disc. And when when they were threatening a lawsuit with Prince Andrew, Virginia's team was trying to pretend there was a hard copy of a photo. There never was. It was a complete freaking lie. Like, never has been. But if that does come out as a lie, and everything's false. Man. Guys, it I'm does. so excited. We'll come back and we'll do round Listen, two. Listen, I'm up for it. And that, okay. this, is, this is why it's... Always still and then and then will you make me like a medal and some yes. sort of Hawaiian uh, yeah. flower shirt or something? <laughs> you fucking need it because if I'm honest, ninety nine point nine percent of people think Andrew is guilty. Yeah. They think he's involved in some madness with Epstein. It doesn't look good yeah. with the meetings and staying at his house yeah. and the pizza stuff and the yeah. the sweating and the photos yeah. and those all those girls giving statements. So it's hard to then turn that. Yeah. yeah you've got to be honest, yeah. it is and very I'm doing difficult. It on my own, yeah, like, listen, you know? fair play. And it's like, listen, and I, and I hope I don't want people in the world to be run by monsters. Mm. I want you to be right. I want you to f think the world's okay. But mm. again, mm. who's behind those strings that then can destroy lives like that? I, mm. That's the questions that have got back. We've seen it through the years, presidents yeah. getting shot. All the fakery goes on with fucking moon landings or whatever mm. it is that's out there. Yeah, so, what do you think about the fake yeah, moon landing? There's no by way the they're way. real. No, uh, no way. so that's... fake, isn't it? Oh yeah, it's fake as fuck. So there was fake. machines and uh, uh, I tried to talk to someone about that recently, and like yeah. Victoria, I'm like, that's my opinion. You know, not that, real. It just looks so you fake. See, so I believe yeah. in this stuff. Like yeah. I don't say like no to these conspiracies. Like that was fake. That was totally staged. And actually. Who is the famous director who admitted it later on when he died? They found all these notes that he'd, he'd written mm -hmm. admitting that. He was a guy from NASA? He, he was asked to film it. No, he was a director. 
he how did, can you he film it even when the spaceship goes up you see the camera going up as well <laughs> the boots are different than the moon I think the flag is moving because there's no um, wind up there so right. So I don't know, but crazy. again, I, it could be fake. Maybe I'm just going down that route, but I just question it. I'm mm. not asked if it's real or not anyway. It doesn't yeah. really, I don't wake up and go, oh, the moon. I don't fucking care. Mm. But I'm just interested in why the lie. Yeah. Because you, exactly. look, you look at um, the Truman Show. Well, um, they apparently were trying to, you know, the Americans were trying to say that they wanted to be the first ones, basically. Russia. They wanted to beat Russia. They wanted to, they, they just, they America. America is the leading, you know, mm. country of the world. We want to be the first ones. And yeah, they 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 lied. Just before we finish up, because I know you spoke about the monarchy monarchy um crashing, which is a possibility. Do you think Well, America, I don't think it's crashing. The no, monarchy but, is under attack. Yeah, right but now. do you do you think that's and the left that's what and it the is? leftist media is having a field day with this. So if it was to crash, what would happen? It's not gonna crash. No, but if it never did. It never will. Because the UK has been a strong force on this planet yeah. since existence. The, U the UK is strong. Like, there's been so many things that the royal family has had to live with throughout the centuries. Like, this is a breeze right now. But it's been hard, I think, for the current um, members of the royal family. Like, this has not been easy. As you said before, you know, Meghan Markle. And, you know, I think the stress of her to the family that could have been one of the reasons that's brought down uh kate you know cancer is stress at the end of the day and i think if people lived in an atmosphere that was less stress like more stress-free mm -hmm. there would be less illness see it's mad i always thought the royal family were immune to everything i didn't mm -hmm. think they would well as a get, child you yeah, grow up i didn't think they would ever have cancers yeah. i didn't think Prince Andrew would be doing interviews. I don't think the media would be speaking mm. negative about well, them. Well, the Queen... They're not that much protected the, as the people think. They're not. And you see, they used to be because the Queen was really good like that. She didn't give too much. You never saw the Queen speaking about politics. She was just sort of behind, smiling, doing her speeches, but didn't get political. Yeah. And I think that's where it's also gone wrong right now. Like we should do, be staying away people from... People genuinely do love the royal family. Yeah. Like King Charles was and what do you, what do you think about this whole green agenda? Yeah, I don't I don't give a fuck. I'm not mm. for any agenda. I'm for mm. me, my family, the people around me. I'm only yeah. trying to learn from my mistakes. Stay open-minded how people can have a better life and a mm. better understanding. I don't have all the answers, but I'm mm. working at it to then... Have some patterns and tools and techniques for people to go, well, wait a minute, this guy changed. He's doing well for himself. He's not happy 24 7, but he knows if he's unhappy, he can't change. But what change do you it. think about climate change? It's all it's bullshit. bullshit. Yeah, right? It's all yeah. bullshit. You've got a young 14 year old Such girl getting into schools and, and putting fear into everybody. Mm. The world's massive. When you actually go on an airplane, how <laughs> empty is the world? Yeah. There's not much, there's so much space. I know. So, right, plans for the future. Give me your plans. Where do you see yourself? Um, I don't know. I'm just sort of going with the flow right now. I moved back a year ago. I'm really enjoying my time back in England. And um, we'll see what happens. I'm I'm working on a book at the moment. So I'd like to get that finished. You've and, got a book um, out before? I did. I wrote a fiction novel out before. Um, about It was a fictionalized version of my teenage years at boarding school. <laughs> So I know probably for your your kind of age group um, daughter obviously not you, <laughs> <laughs> but um, but yeah they're working on that and um, once this whole madness of Virginia Jufre comes out um, George and I are going to be working on a screenplay. Yeah, but like I say, man, I welcome you back on mm. with all the information when you can release it. But listen, if it's putting wrongs to right, I'm mm. all for it. I'm just about finding out the truth, and that is where I'm. That has always been like what I'm looking for. What do you think? Just before, sorry again. Mm. What do you think of the Harry and Meghan situation? I think it's not a good situation. I think he's completely blinded. Could she be um, a plant? So I always said this, and I even said this to a journalist friend of mine a couple of years ago, and they just, they wouldn't write the story. I even gave it to the Sun newspaper. They're like, we can't write this. But I, I literally feel like she's like a spy. Well, so a she, I, 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 feel, I, I, I feel like she's a government asset. Like having close ties of Obama and the Clintons is like a red flag to me. It's like you say, you get in there actually... Get him to fall head over heels, break up with his family. That puts yeah. a massive strain. Two brothers, 
Yeah. The ones, brothers should be dying for each other. Yeah. Not letting women yeah. get fucking involved. If somebody's trying to turn you against your brother, fuck them off. And actually, interestingly enough, there was another actor, um, I have to look it up, who actually, it's on record, it's in a, it's in a, a piece from a newspaper somewhere, but he also said, I think she's a government asset. I really do believe that. Lady V, for thanks, listen, thanks for coming on today. I thoroughly enjoyed it. I hope everything you're saying is true and a lot of people are innocent, but if you're not, I expect you to come back on and have an apology. Yes. Would you like to finish up I'll on anything back. else? <laughs> no, like I think um, I think we're good. I think we covered everything. Listen, again, thanks for everything. I wish you nothing but the best for the future. Thank you so Thank much. You.